Evening everybody, welcome to Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live for the iRacing MSA British Sim Races Touring Car Championship from the Mid-Ohio Sports Car Course in the United States. Hello everybody, I'm Andrew Woodhouse and as usual I'm joined by Adam Bath and iRacing World Championship driver Alex Simpson. Um, Alex, I'll bring you in first mate, I know we did a lot of this track from the IndyCar days. Uh, do you like it and if so, what's the main challenges of the, of the track for these drivers? Yeah, I love Mid-Ohio, great circuit, got a great flow to it, and um, I tell you what, the challenges really on this car, on this track are usually the car getting quite light over some of the crests. Now, it's going to be a little bit different, of course, in the uh, Kia, the car's going to want to push on a little bit, but I think that will make some of the understeery um, issues probably even worse coming over some of those crests, and also maybe even get the car a little bit loose on the rear end um, on braking, because it does like to, um, to get a little bit loose on you if you're not careful. Well, so just should, like, yeah, sorry, just, yeah, I was just gonna say it should be it should be an interesting one. I was gonna say just like um, Suzuka that we were at and Road Atlanta, Adam, uh, you really have to get your line perfectly right, especially in the final sector. Yeah, it's a track where the flow is uh, pretty much everything around here, similar in a way to uh, Zandvoort where we were a few weeks ago in the uh, the Formula Renault. Of course, I was in the card there, but um, yeah, we should be mm. in uh, for an interesting one. Last week we saw the packs really tightly congested um, at Virginia. And I think we might be able to see the same uh, here. Well, we weren't at Virginia last week, were we? Um, wherever we were last week, it, well, I do remember it being tightly uh, congested, the pack. We're running through the points before we go down to the grid. Uh, David Baker leads the way. He is 195 points out of Wojciech Svidovic. And uh, from looking at the qualifying times, um, Baker in third. Wojciech is not here. So this could be more points for Baker. Oh. Uh, Stelian Chapelevsky in third, he's starting on the front row. Then uh, Hackerson in fourth, fifth Richard Gore, sixth Dan Kraft, seventh Alex Malensky, eighth Jack McIntyre, ninth Pete Harrod. Harrod now in, into the top ten in points. And then in tenth Nicole Foggy, Foggy leading the way in the AM category with uh, John Roberts in second, Stuart Atkinson third, Roy Verke fourth, Laura Bond in fifth. And in the team standings, it's Apex Racing now, 261 points. They're just starting to stretch their legs a little bit now over CQRS line. And then in third, ProSim, uh, CQR Race Up in fourth, boosted the highest of the Pro-Am teams in fifth, with Northern Lights Racing in sixth, Fanatec seventh, SimGear eighth, Automec not killer ninth, and then GT Omega with Team Mad in tenth in the teams. Just, um, just quickly as well, my favourite grid of the season, Alex, because look where the back row is starting. I, I know, it's ridiculous here. <laughs> going to be a standing start of course no uh no rolling start as is customary here at mid ohio we'll take you through the uh, some of the starting grid then uh, jamie fluke is on pole head of stelling chepelowski dave baker in third ash sutton in fourth dan craft fifth andreas katz in sixth colin cuniff seventh alex malinsky in eighth pete harrod in ninth and jake blackhall in tenth is there anybody else we should be looking out for adam uh, we're starting at the back of the grid. We've got like Stuart McFadden. We've got Sven Glatzel, who's been a bit off the uh, the boil recently. Uh, other drivers have got back of the grid penalties. We've got uh, Lee Berridge, uh, Max Wright, Craig Evans. A lot of the Automec team involved here. Also George Simmons. He's fourth in the championship. Uh, not George. Not Simmons. That's Ben Hackerson. Uh, George Simmons. Uh, he's fifteenth uh, in the championship, I should say. But uh, Ben Hackerson's teammates. Here we go. Ready for the lights. We go then. Green, green, green. Ready for the start here at Mid Ohio. Green here. Good start by. Oh, what a start by Stelian Chepelowski. Already ahead of Jamie Fluke into the first corner. It's quite a fast left hander, this. Cuts across, sliding through the first corner is Sutton. He's already got ahead of Baker. Baker leads the championship, of course. As Sutton covers him off into the hairpin, then. Oh, sliding is Chepelowski. Sutton oh. on the inside of Fluke and he hits him. And there goes Baker through into third, so Sutton, bit of a battering ram style move there, but and just to get through. Well, yeah, the battering ram, and then, Dan Craft, and then CQR his ganging up here on Jimmy Fluke. Yeah, the CQR flock have just come through as they go at the end of the back straight. Three CQR cars through, and yeah, the apex car of Jamie Fluke down to fifth position now. It, it, really, it really is apex versus CQR at the front here at the minute because. Three Apex cars, the leader, Stelian Chepelevskin and Jamie Fluke, who's in fifth, and sixth, Andreas Katz. And then the three CQR cars, you see them in order. Ashton Sutton with the blue uh, stripe on the front bumper, and uh, Dave Baker with the orange, and then the black stripe of Daniel Kraft. It's not the black stripe that Alex Simpson's got, of course, but it's something, Alex. Yeah. We'll be having that for uh, much longer, the way this year's going. Oh, I don't know. Not even done a race? 
Don't know. Well, the, yeah, but the, uh, the, well, the Blanc pan. Well, there is the Blanc pan, yes, true. There you go. Oh, oh double contact. Lines. Contact between uh, Adam Hanfield and Nico Foggy. Um, nothing really came of it. Both men survived, but... Oh, it's really a bit of... Uh, very close quarters in mid-Ohio, Adam. Always is, and it's one of those places it's very, very difficult to manoeuvre your way through, especially in race one where, you know, everybody pretty much is kind of where they should be. As oh, off goes McFadden, I think. That's Jim McFadden. Uh, oh, well, the inside is uh, Josh Thompson, uh, past Kip Stevens going into the keyhole, the hairpin. Uh, that's a good move there. It is cat and mouse around this circuit, and if you make a mistake, it's a whole lot worse, especially if you have to try and rejoin. Uh, ask a, a certain beast to driver about that as uh, we go down the back straight on the second lap of the race. This is where the rolling starts usually get going, uh, but we're not doing that today. And this is one of the key overtaking points, this right-hander at the end of the straight. Yeah, it is. And, um, and by the way, Stephen Baxter started at the at the rear of the field. Oh, Whitehead problems. Andrew Whitehead, well. who had problems here last year, uh, was in 27th, but the boosted car very slow through the second sector, and he's uh, gone off. He might looks like he's had brakes himself really going into that right-hander. Yeah, I think so. Um, it sounded like someone blew the motor. I don't know whether it was just a rogue sound I heard. Sutton having a look every which way at Stelian Cepilevski. Um Yeah, I think the right-hander at the end of the straight, Alex, is, is the best overtaking place, as Adam was saying, but can do it into turn two if you set them up through this fast uh, fast left here. Yeah, it's very short oh. everywhere. That's the thing. You're really you're gonna have to be like Sutton-esque on the brakes anywhere to get it done. I think so. You were uh, not. Chappie has to take an early apex arrow just to avoid Sutton it's coming through. Sutton, Sutton, Sutton just hitting him. Yeah, just not. <laughs> he's going for it, isn't he tonight? <laughs> you were not wrong about the blown engine. Dan Hunt's out of the race. He had he suffered the blown engine at the end of the straight on the previous lap. But here okay. comes Sutton now. Lap three down the straight. Already using as much of the slipstream as he can. There's not going to be much of it around this circuit. And Chepilevski having to cover off the Apex car in the early stages for the first time in a while. Oh, Sutton trying an in innovative line there through, through, turn, uh, through turn three. You can get that one done, but you've really got to surprise the opponent. Couldn't quite do that that time to Selian Chepilevski, who is a veteran. He knows what he's doing. He's got a lot of experience in the car, and um, he really knows where to place that gear up tomorrow. For the first time in a while, we've actually seen Ash Sutton up at the front. He's either joined late or has had back of the grid penalty. So uh, he's joined his CQR colleagues here and he is leading them to victory at the moment if he can just get past Stelian Cepilevski. But Chepi, Bulgarian, putting up a resolute defence here in the early stages. It is a 11-lap uh, race. I don't think we've mentioned that today. Uh, just coming out of the final corner now, the left-hand kink onto lap four of 11. Yeah, that was like he's leading unless he's not. Yeah. <laughs> oh, he's going now. He might be. Any moment now. Side by side. Oh, it's that's a, oh wow! What a save by Chepilevski. Well, we thought there was going to be some contact, Alex, and, and there it materialised itself. All these little zero X's getting away with them at the moment. And that's it. That's what we don't get in the Renault on Tuesday night. Yeah, exactly. We don't exactly. get any of those. But um, here comes Jamie Fluke on Daniel Kraft. This is for fourth place. Baker just in front of him as well. It's the Northern Irishman, Fluke. Baker trying very strategically to uh, cut off Fluke. Fluke's up the inside, though, the RAC World Championship driver up the oh. inside. Kraft. Bosch as well. He's um, <laughs> pushed out of the way. That might be uh, somewhat of a bit of payback from Fluke. I think the gauntlet was, let, uh, was already put down in turn two on that one by Ash Sutton there. So the Apex yeah. car's giving it uh, right back to the CQR cars here. Well and truly thrown down the pole sitter. Jamie Fluke was down to fifth and he's getting beaten up a little bit in the front of the race but he's going to join the battle again Alex see if he can work with his teammate Chepi to try to, um, to oh Sutton's on the grass as he's trying to get through what a maniac <laughs> good to see Katz back up there as well he's been away for a little bit and um, yeah filling in as um, uh, Wojciech is uh, as away P6 Having, as well so that's enjoying bad. a lovely holiday oh nearly going for the lead again I, I don't want to I want to cover some of the rest of the race, but <laughs> you can't take the battle, <laughs> take the eyes off the battle at the very front of the field. And there's another big pack going on here with Michael Hall and Richard Gore leading the way. That's Apex versus CQR as well. Oh. As Sutton again, and to bash his way through. He's, the other thing he's really doing though, um, I don't miss he's crumpling the, the front left of that Keir Optima. 
I guess the, I guess the downforce isn't too important around this circuit, especially not on the straights anyway. But here they go down uh, the longest straight we've got on this circuit. Sutton doing well, a double possibly. Goes. He's left the door oh, open. Chapulevsky, no, this is going to end badly. Oh dear. And it has. But Sutton not for Ashley Lee. Sutton. Jamie Fluke all over the place. And that's Fluke past Chapulevsky. The right-hand side of Chapulevsky's car is heavily damaged after that. And now Fl oh, Kraft barges his way through. I think that was more Chapulevsky turning across Daniel Kraft there. But it's all but happened here. Chepi left that words. a little bit too late to block the inside, didn't he? Sutton was already he there. He had no choice but to make to the grass. And, uh, yeah, getting the car stopped then, it's amazing that the two are still going forwards. You've got to be, with us Sutton, you've got to be very early to defend. Otherwise, he will take the position. Baker's trying to go through now, and that's an easy one. That's team orders there. I think you are, surely. Well, that's much better team orders than we saw the other day. I won't say any more about that. But, <laughs> but um, that's how you do team orders, Alex. Indeed. You're going to do it. You do it now, not at the end. But I can hear some contact. I think we're all right. Well, you've got it right about the engine blow up, but here comes uh, this is um, this is Ash Sutton trying to defend, but Fluke is now on a mission oh and he's hit Baker. It's breaking down a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> Sutton was like, "Don't do that to my friend." And here we go. That's going to be uh, too wide down the straight. Fluke is trying to get back in the middle, but uh, Dan Craft oh. is saying no, son. It's going to end, end quite badly here. Very and wide. Oh, Sutton has got to be aggressive here, but not too aggressive because he doesn't want to run into Baker. Jamie Fluke's really impressive. the outside, air. but Baker now blocks the inside. It's perfect defensive driving from CQR. It's absolutely perfect here. Oh. And this, for the first time this season, we're really seeing this pack mentality. And the two, the two camps, the two main teams, you would say, in the series that probably are going to be fighting at the very front of the field. There's other great teams, of course, in the series, but these two, Alex, I think they're the premier ones. Yeah, fantastic racing out there right now. Can't take our eyes off that front bow. Apologies to everybody else. That pack behind is amazingly close as well, but this is just absolutely brilliant stuff right now. Well, the pincer Very movement, isn't it, yeah. that we were doing on um, Jamie Fluke there, and Chepilevsky now trying to get back in the mix. He's regrouped. He's now trying to get past, back at Daniel Kraft, and he's got Andreas Katz's apex colleague going with him. I'll tell you what, though, all it might take, Adam, is for um, Luke to spend a couple of laps behind Sutton, and Baker could have enough of an advantage, but Fluke's very, very quick, and I don't think that it's going to be that easy for Sutton to keep him behind. Although I will say uh, that Sutton is an absolute master on the on the brakes. So I mean, not many people manage to pass Sutton on the brakes, Alex, at all. No, not at all. You need that good run. You need to be definitely alongside, as we saw just the last lap. Sutton was able to break on that tighter line and still get the car stopped no problem once again Jamie to the outside even even someone as good as Jamie Fluke who's a, who is a BSR TC champion and also a um, an I Racing World Championship Series driver I Racing Grand Prix Series champion even he will struggle to get past the, uh, the Jack Sears Trophy winner on the brakes Ash Dustin's definitely been tutoring his uh, CQR colleagues in the defence against the uh, the Apex cars I thought you were going to say defence against the dark arts then. Oh, it was, it was a bit <laughs> for, of a for some <laughs> reason. But yeah, top ten then on lap <laughs> seven of the race. We are over the halfway mark now already. Uh, Baker leads, Ash Sutton second, Jamie Fluke in third, fourth Dan Kraft, fifth is uh, Stelian Chapulevsky, Katz in sixth, Cunniff seventh, Smolensky eighth, Harrod ninth, and Blackhall in tenth. The lower half of the top ten uh, have, not, have not changed positions at all since the start of the race. Just a little bit. look further back while we can as they're separated a bit, but. It still involves a uh, CQR car, Matt Barn, Ross McFarlane, Nathan Davis, another Apex car as well. So they're all <laughs> nip and tuck wherever they are. And to be um, honest, the Atkinson other one... suffering with some sort of connection problems as well. Yeah, he has been all to race. To be honest, Alex, the, the, uh, the other team that's really up there in this race is Northern Lights Racing. They've got three cars, mm. um, three cars within the top 20. That would be Colin Cunniff, who's in seven. Uh, Ross McFarlane, who's 14th, and Nicole Foggy, who's 16th. Oh, God, oh, look at this for 13th, 14th, 15th. Oh, That's Ackerson, crazy. Ackerson blinking around, struggling with the connection. Up the inside goes McFarlane. But he's oh, got knocked, goes, but you can't blame. Oh, no. Susan's been hit. Fluke is through. It's happened. Oh, I can, oh. it's happened. Something's happened again, and that's, that's Chepilevsky and oh. Susan. 
And well, Chepilevsky into the wall! And that's and so both of them disqualified. Both of them disqualified. I don't know if Chepilevsky's carrying on, but yeah, he's, he's still there. But Ash Sutton on too many, I think. I believe Ash Sutton holds the record for most disqualifications in his BSRTC career, and uh, <laughs> that's another one to add to that. Well, he's also got some of the most wins, Adam, but... It was, it was the, yeah, the first collision was almost a prelude to what happened a, there. I've oh, got to say, mess. though, Alex, I don't know if we can see it again, but it kind of looked like the red mist might have descended for Chepilevsky there. Yeah, let's see if we can pick that back up. I mean, it, it looked like he... Unless he was out of control, I don't know, but... Even then, I don't think it was the best move at the end. One with the robot. We don't want that to descend into anything like we saw the other day, I must admit. Oh, it's um, uh, more stuff looks like it's kicking I, off. No, I tell you what, no, it's, I don't think at all. It just, uh, well, there's a little knock, knock to the side. I Did think he, he was just again? out of control, yeah. Uh, he got hit initially the first time, which we didn't see. Um, but he has continued. Oh, here he's comes. The 25th, but he's still there. Colin Cuniff on the Smolensky. Smolensky outbreaks himself. Cuniff is through, so Northern, well. Or is he? Uh, maybe not. He's got the line, though. Smolensky sideways and somehow still regaining traction. Not Got clear, versus he? <laughs> Bulgaria here. Oh, okay. and sliding the car is going to through into a um, very impressive fifth. Nathan Davis and Josh Thompson, two of the biggest movers through the field. Uh, Davis in 10th has gained 10 positions. Um, and uh, Josh Thompson up 10 as well. Uh, the same can be said for Sven Glatzel, uh, Simmons and McFadden. So uh, those are some of the biggest movers Glatzel. in the field so far. Glatzel's amazing in there. Uh, I was going to say, at least uh, Josh and good. Nathan aren't on the same bit of track as well, because there's no love oh, loss between those right, two. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, we could see Tuesday night all over again. I just... I was, I was about to say, I just I just had flashbacks then, mate. Oh, oh. Like nightmares. Um. Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. Visions. <laughs> Christian Rose uh, is someone who we never normally see on a uh, Thursday night. He's in there with... Uh, right behind Pete Newman, actually. So Christian Rose is a very quick driver in the in the Renault, and in um, the uh, Master MX5 we've seen before as well. Oh, and off goes um, that Simmons going very well. Yeah, that was the Vitali Petrov rejoin, I think, um, on the exit yeah. there. Or the Raikkonen rejoin at Silverstone a few years ago. Do you remember that one? Oh. Caused the red flag. Max Chilton was pretty lucky there to not have any uh, debris land on him there. As uh, Nathan yeah. Davis has got past Michael Hall, I've just seen that position. That uh, change happen. Oh, and there's smoke. Uh, so, might be a bit of contact involved somewhere. <laughs> oh, Blackhall comes on an almost 90 degree angle to the circuit. I'm not sure who oh, it was, but a CQR car gets Hall, I think. Oh, I goodness me. Nico Foggy's managed to get in about four spots there, I think. I've just had a look on the replay. Hall's out as well. So, it could well be. Got the Hall's out. Because of it. Oh, no. Oh, oh, someone's around. Replay. Who was that? That is McFarlane around. He's been having a great race as well. Oh, the a Scotsman. Spin, what happened there? Oh, he was in 11th at the time. And with the Kier Optimi, you can't just do a spin turn. Please don't be a teammate collision. Thankfully not. They're pretty close. That was a really weird one. Dave hey, Baker looks like he's yeah, He lost the car on the way in, didn't he? Fluke, it's gentlemen. unusual. Yeah. Here comes Fluke for the lead on the final lap. And how sweet would it be for Jamie Fluke? If he can avoid all that pressure from that CQR, uh, well, the CQR murder, I think we should call it. If he can it's come away with his plunder from this one and all oh, oh. oh, into the side of Baker, here we go then. Six tenths of a second quicker on the last lap, by the way. Two Racing Academy together, Alex, didn't they? Yeah, they did. <laughs> know each other well. Do they get on these two? Oh, he yeah. oh, they the do, yeah, absolutely. Oh, side by side, and Luke nudges Baker, and oh, just like Sutton was doing to him earlier on. Baker, of course, leads the championship. He's been on a roll recently. He got a pole position last week, and um, we don't normally see Dave Baker on the very, very front of the grid, but first time he's had a pole for a long time. Can he take race one victory, which is... Quite rare in itself for, for number uh, car number two. Here we go then, final sector of it. Pico, I need the team points as well. Apex of Kraft. extended the lead. Kraft is on the back of them. Check a flag at the ready. Here we go then. And it waves for David Baker. He wins again here. And he wins at Mid-Ohio. Jeremy Fluke, P2. I think he's going to be happy with that in the end. Nathan third Davis. Foot, Nathan, Nathan Davis disqualified on the final lap of the race. Two corners from home. <laughs> 
Oh, wow. That sums up Nathan Davis's career in this championship so far. And that means that quite a few drivers benefiting from these qualifications, including Laura Bond, Jack McIntyre, and Sven Glatz up to 21st. 14 positions gained in a race like this is exceptional work by Glatz up. Seems to be able to pick his way through every every single situation, Alex. It's it's it is just just like Ash Sutton, really, how we can get through these fields. Yeah, he's, I mean, been a bit of a breath of uh, fresh air in the series, hasn't he? The way he's been able to, to race out there, and some of the um, some of the weeks been right at the front as well. So, it's quite amazing how far he's come from being beaten by Adam in the Kia World Series to uh, <laughs> to uh, to this hap you know, to being one of the. He'll definitely be a showdown contender if he can keep out of trouble and start higher up the field. Yeah. I think that was I think that was his um his reason for inspiration. I think if if I could beat him. <laughs> Well, we did. I did race against him a few times as well. And he, we always had good competitive racing, so um, yeah, I think it's it's good to see drivers like that though come from those. And, and they were. And the funny thing was, there was that big hoo ha about the World Series, the Club Series, and, and this. And it, Alex, it did exactly what it was supposed to do in the end. It was a feeder series for the BSRTC, and it's done exactly that now. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> so. all the best drivers from that were talking Harrod. We're talking Hackerson, Sakovic, uh, people like you know, people like that. They've all come through, and they've all added to this series tremendously. Um, Adam, if you take us through the final order, then please. Hey, uh, here are the results from the opening race of the day. Uh, oh, uh, sadly, it's, it can only get worse from here. I think that was absolutely brilliant. Um, David Baker takes the win. Jamie Fluke second. Dan Kraft in third. Two way, pe two CQR cars on the podium. One. Apex, so it's 1-0 to CQR this evening. Andreas Katz, 4th. 5th, Colin Cuniff. Alex Malensky in 6th. Pete Harrod, 7th. Nicole Foggy in 8th. Matt Bunn in 9th. And Jake Blackhall somehow managed to finish in 10th, despite it all kicking off at the end of the back straight. Uh, Rusty Lader, 11th. 12th, for Adam Hadfield. 13th for Richard Gore. 14th for Josh Thompson after starting in 28th, so he uh, gained some of those positions back. Then Forsyne Helgerson in 15th. Mark Woodhouse in 16th. 17th, John Roberts. 18th, Ben Hackerson. Uh, despite the car blinking about a bit, you're still able to get a top 20 finish. 19 for Laura Bond, 20 for Jack McIntyre, Sven Glatzel, the highest of the cars that were banned from qualifying. Uh, Pete Newman, another car banned from qualifying, finishing in 22nd. 23rd for Kip Stevens, Christian Rose in 24th. Matthew Kieber, 25th. George Simmons in 26th. Uh, Cesaro Rizzo, 27th. 28th, Stuart McFadden. We saw an issue for him earlier, I think. Michael Blake in 29th. And Julian Janowski in 30th. Lee Berridge, 31st. Stuart Atkinson, 32nd. Stelian Chapolevsky, crucially, getting it to the finish. So he could be in with a shout of being in a good position for the reverse grid. He'll be hoping for a pretty large number, I think. Uh, Rob Graham, 34th. Andrew Whitehead, 35th. We saw he had issues uh, in the back section of the circuit at the start of the race. Uh, Scott Malcolm, 36th. Max Wright, 37th. Craig Evans in 38th. And then the car one lap down or more. Nathan Davis disqualified. Uh, Ross McFarlane, uh, he too might have gone the same way. Uh, I am just going to check the um, think the I incident think right. points for that one. Uh, just two seconds. Yeah, it, didn't Ross... finish, it didn't finish the race. Yeah, race, yeah. I mean. 12 incidents for Ross McFarlane. So yeah, he was a victim of DQ. So uh, Craig Evans will be on reverse grid pole if we get a full. Uh, Michael Hall, two laps down. Uh, that was a, another disqualification, I believe. Uh, Michael Hall, yeah, Hall uh, disqualified 11 incidents. After he, got, he got punted, Alex, was that right? Well, I, I'm pretty Hall. sure Hall was caught when Jack, um, Blackhall come back on at quite a sharp angle. So a bit of a bit of a bad rejoin, I think, for Jack there. And uh, Sutton also... Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Susan four laps down disqualified as well. The only two cars that uh, didn't finish the race were Stephen Baxter. I didn't see what happened to the 48 car and Dan Hunt, uh, that blown engine, earlier on. Francisco, Stephen Baxter started at the back, so unless he just crashed or something on his own, I, I don't know really what happened to, uh, to him. Okay then, um, well, we've just got the reverse grid wheel to do then, Alex. So will it be a full and will it put Northern Lights Racing onto the front row? We'll see. Now, give me two seconds, because, uh, yeah, I am not prepared be... one bit. It would be joined like, oh, by Max... The wheel, the wheel. It would be joined by Max Wright, who I hope doesn't get lost this week. Is it... 
if it is a full, it would be Evans, Wright, Malcolm, Whitehead, and Graham at the front. So um, quite a good, um, quite a good grid for Scotland. That would be um, Adam. Oh well, yeah, things are going pretty well for Scotland at the moment in a, another sport. Um, but yeah, that which is uh, football. football um, right. Oh well, it, it, yeah, it is. Um, okay, so, sorry, guys. Yeah. Uh, Oh. Ball with the wheel. Yeah. oh my word, that's so close to being a fall, but it's only 26. Oh, Stellion's fuming, Alex. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's that's, that's the going to be George Simmons on the pole. Uh, Matt Bukiva second, Christian Rose third, Kip Stevens fourth, and uh, fifth will be Pete Newman. All right, um, so 26 is the uh, the full amount of the old early 90s f1 grid and it's on and it's only just two-thirds of this bsr tc field that's exactly how um how massive these grids are and it's going to be a challenge for those guys um who won well who were at the front of this race to fight their way through from the 20s so um we'll see and plus george simmons now makes himself a massive favorite i think for race two so we'll see you back here on apex racing tv and i racing live when we return after the break in the i racing msa british sim racers touring car championship Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. 
Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to Apex Racing TV and our racing live round two of the evening in the Our Racing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship. We saw a fantastic race in the uh, in first round, Alex. In fact, it was more of a fight. It was more like what we're hoping Mayweather versus McGregor is going to be like in uh, in about a month's time. Yep, I think um, yeah. It's normally it's, what race three, four, where the elbows start to come out. But uh, yes, uh, Sutton set the uh, standard nice and early, didn't he? Right on turn number two. Have it. This is what it's going to be like, boys. And it was an absolute cracker. So, um, yeah, let's hope for the same again. Watch those guys coming through the pack. But it's going to be tough around here. I think we could see some, um, you know, sort of surprise winner here. Conor McGregor's used to elbows, Adam, and I think he'd been quite pleased with some of those thrown by the guys at the front of the BSRTC in race one. I imagine him as a racing driver now, that would have been oh, <laughs> something, something else. Uh, really through the grid, uh, George Simmons, I'll be hoping for, um, for Conor McGregor. The FIA, can you imagine the FIA press conference? I imagine um, the pen after the race, if uh, Lewis did something. Um, <laughs> I'd like him to do something to Lewis, but that's the number one. Uh, Simmons leads, uh, so Simmons is on the pole, uh, Matthew Keever second, Christian Rose third, Stevens fourth, Pete Newman fifth, Sven Glatzel sixth, Jack McIntyre seventh, Laura Bond eight, Packerson ninth, and John Roberts. King of the Ring, uh, actually, as we're talking about boxing, I guess, uh, on, on, in 10th position, Nick on the lights. We go then. Seconds out, gentlemen. Green, green, Round green. two. Ding, ding, ding. Green flag in the air then. Great start by Simmons, boosted motorsport. To the first corner. First. Oh, oh, crash! And it's uh, Newman, is it? It is. Used his head, didn't try and roll back onto the track, so not really anything else after that. Great shot as they all come out of turn one. Great start for uh, our Falatech as well. Matthew Kieber in second. Sorry, Christian Rose up in second. Matthew Kieber in third. And then fourth, Jack McIntyre. Fifth, Kip Stevens. Sixth, Laura Bond. And seventh, the King of the Ring, John Roberts. And then Richard Gore side by side with. Um, oh, guys. Elderson. This has caused an absolute nightmare, this um, Whitehead problem. Look at how many people were in They're the out. box. They Blue. weren't released because the car didn't go by the exit of the pit oh, lane. Pete, you mean they're Pete only, Newman? Yeah, they're only released once they once Pete would have gone past the exit line of the uh, pit lane, so they've had to sit there for absolutely ages. Wow, that is that is the true definition out of a final car past the pit <laughs> lane exit. And yeah, that's um, how many drivers are we talking there? Uh, there was one. Nowski, Graham. And Evans, Glass, right, and at least. I don't think it's as many as that, actually. Unless there's some. Oh, off goes um, an Apex car. Blue mirrors. It's Gore, I think, is it? It's Katz. Yeah, Richard Gore's still going. So Andreas Katz, he was he was doing okay in race one. Uh, Baker wheel to wheel now with the uh, the automatic car. If that is surely Jim McFadden. Has it come across the line? Yes, it is. Uh, that's Baker from. 18th position, uh, sorry, up to 18th position. Uh, he's gained eight places so far since the start of the race. Button goes past Davies, that's for 20 something position, 25th, I think. Josh Simmons flying away at the front, the great lead for Bristol Motorsport. And uh, Christian Rose in second place, he knows how to uh, get this mid Ohio sports car of course. Matthew Keeper in third, and fourth, McIntyre, and Stevens, Bond, Roberts, Gore, Laidler. Helgerson, and look at this. Foggy and as well. Look at car 104, that's Matt Bunn. On the inside of uh, Jake Blackall. And yeah, Foggy and Smolensky. Foggy around the outside in the Northern Lights Racing car. Smolensky. Trying the long way around the top of the hill, that's very difficult to do, but he's there. He's on the inside. But Foggy using that momentum in that Northern Lights Racing car to uh, power into uh, 14th place. But I think that's keeping 14th place, isn't it? I think Smolenski was attacking there. Yeah, I think it was. There's something a bit further up as well. We did have... We've got... Um, Must be Maidler. Maidler. Oh, yeah. Well, he was. Uh, that's the Alex Simpson line right there going through the final corner. I don't think <laughs> he could have used much more of the, of the outside there. Just in front, Richard Gore giving John Roberts a bit of uh, food for thought. Maybe a bit more than he can chew. Richard Gore, John Roberts, they used to be AM Championship rivals, but then Gore got unceremoniously punted into the pro category. Oh, he might he's get punted out the way here. <laughs> <laughs> he, might, he might do indeed. He's got a good run though, Richard Gore. Roberts having to defend, Roberts getting a bit of a slipstream from Bond. 
which is going to transfer over now to Gore. As Bond takes her racing line for the middle sector. Gore's going around the outside here. Going to have the advantage into the tight left, and there's a Bond engine, and it's uh, it's Bond. Ah. Bond is done, and that's not fun. Well, it sounded like it sounded like a gun. Um, it did sound like a gun. So easy on. to do down there, though. You don't want to. That corner is all about making sure that you've got maximum grip available to throw it in there, and drivers really leaning on the engine, braking. As there's a battle going on side by side. That's Woodhouse and Foggy. And how many points for Bun? Done. <laughs> so that. Not done. Um, <laughs> Up the inside into the final corner and behind them, it's, so that's number three. That's Dan Kraft trying to get past Alex Smolenski here. Smolenski might give him a bit of room going through the final left-hander, but Kraft not able to get oh, alongside. No, oh, he's fighting bash. <laughs> Take that, you idiot, Smolenski will be saying. <laughs> oh, oh no, again. Kraft hits and him again. And that looked like, and that just, I, I'm not, oh dear. Did not look great, that Alex. I must admit, from the front camera, and he's now all over the place in front of Baker. Looked like Kraft had just had enough of him. Yeah, it did look a little bit <laughs> like that. It was like, look, I'm coming up the inside, whether you like it or not. Have you, a know, you can you can either turn in and we'll hit each other, or you can give me some room. I, I, I have to say, I think um, it, oh, it looked like a little bit naughty from Kraft, I must admit. Oh, uh, Kiba McIntyre changing positions on the timing screen. That's because they've been wheel to wheel, and it's up the inside, possibly, for car 25, Matthew Kiba, but no way through. It's the two luminous yellow cars here, and... Um, different teams I must point out Matthew Kieber for Alphalatech and uh, Jack McIntyre for simgear.co.uk Richard Gore has just has finally latched onto the rear of Laura Bond going through uh, the right-hander different lines getting taken through there and uh, later not too far behind uh, the boosted car in fact he's right with the boosted car of uh, John Roberts yeah Laidler trying some interesting lines earlier on in the race of course Gore and Bond they close together, Bond a bit with the slightly wrong line through the final corner, here comes Gore, Gore alongside the sim gear car, he's going to go up the inside into turn one, nice and easy for Gore, that's a good move, Laura, that was sensible driving from Laura as well, Alex didn't fight it too hard because um, she knows that John Roberts in close proximity. Yeah, she's in a strong position at the moment, just needs to stay with this, try and not back too far, could get a reasonable top ten here. Stevens with a good performance as well. He's inside the top five, Adam. Yeah, good job, actually. Just behind them, uh, Pete, uh, Jack Black, Jake Black, calling a uh, force yeah. and mm, I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> That's was... two out of three of you <laughs> of us that have done it so far. Uh, 54 around the outside. Who's that? That's Helgerson. Having a look on um, Blackhall. Oh, and Laidler, look at that on Roberts. No, oh, he's oh. not going to make that work, is he? Oh. oh. Oh, Excellent better. move, is he going to keep it? No, Roberts has got the inside, it's a tough part of the circuit. This, you've got to be on the right line for this double apex right hander. Up and over the crest, here comes Blackhall. They did a good, they did a better job through there than Susan and uh, Fluke did earlier on. Oh, yeah, much better, much better indeed. Great racing so far in the BSRTC round two, and it's car seven in the lead. That's George Simmons for uh, boosted motorsport, and he'll boost his showdown chances, Alex if he can um, hang on for another six laps. Yeah, absolutely no harm in getting a win. Not only does it count towards the points, but it also counts towards the wild card slots as well. So just gives you that, you can get a couple of wins, you know, that gives you that extra buffer that you might, if you do get knocked out, you could still slip in with the um, with the wild card spot. Not to mention the podium credits on offer as well. But exactly. And, and he's sure leading by 2.8 seconds, Adam. That's a decent advantage at this time. 3.2, oh. uh, it's, it's extended even further just there on this lap. Elgerson and Foggy guys side by side coming out of turn number two. I think uh, Foggy's got the better run, he's going to try and sweep across and he does yeah. just before the kink. McIntyre up in the up the inside for the P2 on Christian Rose as well. Rose trying to hang on and he does that. I follow it now with that um, Sim Auto sponsorship on there. Both brandishing that bright yellow, of course. This could also be back. Uh, this could be backing everyone up into the field. Uh, Christian Rose being in second place at the moment. You saw the gap that was made uh, just on this lap: 3.5 seconds from 2.8 uh, for George Simmons. 
Now Christian Rowe is just trying to do everything he can to stay in that second position, but you can see the car sliding about, and we are only just over the halfway mark in the race. Uh, the, t the track temperature is only 19 degrees, so pretty much as cold as it can get on iRacing. Um, oh, Christian Rowe is starting to slide about a bit. I would have needed for that one to work with if Simon Field was here. <laughs> no sign of him. Not this season anyway. Oh, and uh, Kiva. Oh, yes. Kiva. Move there, but here comes Kiva. He's not going to give up on this. Kiva's won races this season. On the outside of Richard Gore into the hairpin. Very wide line taken by McIntyre as well. Trying to get... Oh, here we go. He's straight for that inside line, doesn't he? It's going to be a drag race down the straight. Richard Gore is going to try and follow him. It could be a freight train situation here for Christian Rose if he's not too careful. Rose let on the brakes, though. Oh, that is McIntyre. Look at that. He's not going to make it. Oh, and, he and, gets hit hit. and Rose hits him. And there was absolutely nothing that Rose could do about that. He kind of just followed him, Alex, I think. Outbreaks himself too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, Bob oh. hits Helgerson. Uh, no, it's taking a little bit more of a tag. This is exactly what happens through there. It's just trying to get back into the uh, into the line and in the pack, coming oh. out in front of uh, Bond. Pass Roberts. And look, who's that? Forty-three, Boggy. Boggy's going to take Blackhole, and he might take Roberts as well, Adam. Got a clear, oh, he hasn't got a clear track in front of him, that's for sure. As uh, so they go for the left-hander, and now Blackhole back up the inside car, fifty-nine. And uh, we There's saw what Kraft. happened here between. Uh, that is Dan Kraft, indeed. Yeah, Kraft of 12 positions in 12th place. Oh, Foggy might wash out into him. Blackhall has to get a bit on the dirt, and he now has to go wheel to wheel with him down the straight. Lap 8 of 11 now. Uh, but it looks like the Foggy will have the inside line. But Blackhall's not giving up around the outside. It's brilliant, this. From Jake Blackhall and Nico Foggy. Inside for Blackhall. Carrying that mid corner speed, Foggy with that sweeping line around the outside. Blackall, the Australian driver, gives him some space, a privateer with Asher Racing. Bancraft trying to get involved in this battle as well. They're almost three wide in front of them with Kieber and. Um, and uh, Evans, I think. Evans and uh, possibly McIntyre as well. But here comes Foggy, he's around the outside of Blackall. Blackall's going to have to give him space. He does, and I'm sure I could hear a crash in the background. I don't know if you could... Is anybody on? Yes, Adam Hadfield. Uh, he's just dropped down the timing screen there. Ah, sure. Yeah, I definitely heard someone hitting the wall. And this, meanwhile, has helped out George Simmons massively. Now he's by five seconds. Also, for the people are viewing at home, uh, one way of finding out pro and AM drivers, you can see at the front of the number plates, the yellow is the AMs, the blue with the white rising is the pro drivers. I didn't even know that. <laughs> Yeah, and, well, and also on our overlay day. as well, you've got the difference between the green and the orange as well. Green being for the pro and orange for the um, for the M. There you go. That's something new every day. Here comes Laura Bond on the Matt Kieber. Kieber in P6. Can try and keep it here with the pro suit driver. Bond. Oh. oh, she doesn't want to squeeze Laidler here. Hayden was like, thank you, Laura. Oh! oh. How that, she says. Hell hath no fury like a woman punted. There comes Laidler up the inside. That's not going to... Surely. Oh, no! And there goes Roberts. Laidler missed his breaking point. It was the same as before, really. Oh, miss his breaking point. Bond I think he's going to go up the inside here, isn't he? Oh, he's a bit more cautious than I was expecting. Maybe that gives him the space to be fair on the inside. Uh, Crafton. Also, yeah, Crafton. Oh, yeah, took the words out of my mouth. Sorry, mate. <laughs> uh, good minds think alike, as uh, and all yes. that. There's a craft up the inside. Still tightly packed here, Alex. The middle of the middle of the field. That, that uh, do risk if you end up stepping out of line, make one mistake, and risk two or three places being lost. And, Dan Kraft with a beautiful move around the outside there. Just saw that in the background, but uh, yeah, you're right. It's exactly what it's, it's what this series is all oh! about. You risk everything to go for a position. You could end up going uh, backwards two or three. Fadden hit Sutton. Sorry, Alex. It was quite a minor one in the end, but I could see it happening. Yeah, Sutton survives. Fadden survives. Sutton's got damage on the front of his cap again, Adam. So you've got to wonder always about the incident count with him. 
It just isn't enough, isn't it? Maybe he needs 116 <laughs> incident points, uh, like um, <laughs> 25 uh, positions gained, though. That's as uh, many as Matt Neal needs. <laughs> uh, there we go. Uh, down the straight now. Uh, two laps to go. Anyway. I'm just anyway, moving on, moving swiftly onwards. Uh, Kip Stevens <laughs> with the flag of St. George, George on the helmet, trying to um, get his car up the order. Oh, and he's going for it. Let me St. George's day here on the track. He's against another Englishman, Christian Rose, anyway, so who cares? As, um, yeah, Civil war breaking out. Um, <laughs> 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 That's a, who's that behind her? That is Jack McIntyre, so I believe it is a trio of Englishmen going, duking well, it out here. Well, Kip Stevens um, is the, uh, the, old, the original king. I'm not going to call him old, that's a little bit hard. Uh, he'd probably admit it anyway. Um, but uh, he's the original king, and um, well, McIntyre will be the king slayer here. And off goes Rose, so it's not going to be him. Might be a thorny subject for Stevens here. Gonna be close this, Alex. I reckon these three are gonna be fighting to the very end. I think so. Final lap. Going in wide for Kip. Probably left just a little bit too much room. Oh. Get a bit of a draw from Rose. Rose is gonna to have to cover up. He does already move to the inside. Kip's gonna have a look. They're almost three. Oh, 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 oh. McIntyre and McIntyre drifts out. Around the outside of the hairpin is McIntyre going to be the one who gets the best exit and powers through where the DRS line would normally be with the Formula 1 cars. McIntyre straight across the bend for Matthew Kiever who senses an opportunity here. Here come all the cars with the slipstream, Kip great, Stevens get boxed in here. What a great battle this is going to be. Yeah, McIntyre using that to his advantage, he's through, he might be on tick rows here. Is he going to fly up the inside to the hairpin? He does! He gets this done, this is going to be one of the moves of the night, one of the moves of the season. Stevens oh, is Stevens. trying to get in there as well. He's been hit from behind by Keeper as well, the Stevens. And here comes Laidler, he's not shying away from anything. McIntyre's through. Up, into, up from fifth to third in the space of a few corners. McIntyre through, but into the final sector is George Simmons. Only got two corners to go and it's been a perfect race for him. Started from pole position, got a great start. And for Boosted Motorsport, he's going to come across. He's going to take the checkered flag and he's going to take race two of the evening. Josh Simmons dominates here at Mid-Ohio. Richard Gore, a fine second place. He's going to get third. Oh. It's going to be McIntyre. Daniel Kraft and Laura Bond trading blows as they go for the final corner. Look at this mess as they come to the line. Smolenski is coming as well, but... Davis disqualified on the final lap again. Again! Davis? <laughs> oh. He's doing an Adam Come on, Imola. Nathan. Just uh. give it a rest on the final lap. <laughs> Get yourself across that Woodhouse line. out as well. Woodhouse is out. I think that must have been, they must have got disqualified with each other. Sean. Oh no, Woodhouse. Oh, Woodhouse is dropping down the timing screen, in fact, not, not disqualified. So he just finished in 31st place, just Mark Woodhouse, but he lost um, lost a lot of places there. He lost about 10 spots. I'll just check what happened with uh, Oh, it was, it, was, it was here with Nathan Davis, actually. Was uh, it? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I think so. the magic quarter panel um, making its debut tonight. Uh, oh, Alex, Alex and a big one. Alex will be loving that. He's an expert at that. Yeah. He's, an, he's an expert of. We we knew there was a reason why you were an expert of quarter panels, mate. It's because when you actually got in the gear up to me, that's what happened. That's Smolenski, you know, were you on the receiving end of one as well? No, no, I didn't actually get one. Right. Oh, but you went for a, you went for yeah. a uh, trip into the atmosphere. Yeah, you? yeah, exactly. I was a rubbish noob on cold tyres, and then I was just <laughs> an absolute noob by smashing into the wall. So. <laughs> <laughs> but the first right. race was good. There you go. I think that's <laughs> the, the first time ever okay. we've, we've heard anyone call a car a noob. Um, but yeah, <laughs> uh, Mark Woodhouse. Did we see the replay, Alex? That what happened with, with, with Mark? Uh, sorry, I couldn't find the uh, the incident. Uh, I could just say it's a big one. Uh, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> um, what is it? Uh, what, really what another, what a fantastic race again. Um, yeah, brilliant. Where whereabouts was that, by the way, the Davis Woodhouse? It was uh, just before the carousel to end the lap. Uh, there are a few, there are a few concrete walls around that area of the circuit, so um, yeah, you, you can expect to, uh, yeah. Have a little look then. Amazed how the car is still able to, uh, still able to point in a straight line after that. To be fair, they ran it side by side through pretty much the whole lap, and they were driving absolutely brilliantly. Oh, a third car comes into it. That's the Northern Lights racing car of uh, number 61, Colin Cunniff. Cunniff. Yep. And I think Woodhouse possibly... Oh, no, Davis moved across, I think. 
once again, it was that final sector for Nathan Davis as well. It was only so. a tiny bit, but he did move over to the right a tad. I think Woodhouse was going straight, but the track does curve around to the right, so it's a tough one. Nathan Davis was the only driver disqualified in that race. We had quite a few drivers get the nine incidents. Uh, so, yeah, a bit, bit more clean uh, for the drivers. You wouldn't expect that in a reverse grid race. But, yeah, let's run you through the finishing order. Not often you see a pulse to take a win in a reverse grid race either. That's George Simmons. He wins. Uh, Richard Gore, second. Third, Jack McIntyre. Fourth, Christian Rose. Fifth for Kip Stevens. Uh, after starting in fourth. So, uh, I thought he was one of the biggest movers, actually. Uh, sixth for Matthew Kiva. Laidler, seventh. Eighth, John Roberts. Ninth, Jake Blackhall. And tenth for Nicole Foggy. Uh, eleventh for... Pete Harrod, uh, 12 for Laura Bond, 13th for Dan Kraft, 11 positions gained, 14th for Alex Malensky, 15th for Stein Helgerson, 16th for David Baker, 10 positions gained, 17th for Ash Sutton, 25 positions gained, uh, biggest mover again, and he didn't get disqualified either, so um, that's one thing that's changed from race one. Uh, Stuart McFadden in 18th, for Colin Cunniff, we saw, well, we were talking about um, his role in the collision with... Uh, with Mark Woodhouse at the end. He finished in 19th with Katz in 20th. Lee Berridge in 21st. Even Baxter finished last in... Um, no, pretty much last in uh, race one. Finished in uh, 22nd in race two. Selin Chapelevsky wasn't able to gain much ground after uh, starting at the back of the grid for race two. Finished in 23rd. Michael Hall, 24th. 25th for Ross McFarlane. 26th for Michael Blake. Cesario Rizzo, 27th. 28th for Scott Malcolm. Uh, 29th for Andrew Whitehead and 30th for Stuart Atkinson. Mark Woodhouse in the end finishing in 31st place just ahead of Sven Glatzel who started inside the top 10 but had a pit lane start so wasn't able to get uh, much further for him after the uh, the green light took its time to get on. Julian Janowski in 33rd, Jamie Fluke to 34th, 35th for Max Wright, Craig Evans 36th, Rob Graham in 37th, Dan Hunt in at 38th place after blowing that engine in race one. Uh, ben Hackerson, 39th. I'm guessing those two drivers were forced to start from the pit lane. Uh, Nathan Davis, one lap down, disqualified. Adam Hadfield, he didn't get disqualified, so he will be the car eligible for the reverse grid pod. We get a full. Uh, Pete Newman, six laps down. Matt Bunn, nine laps down. Uh, him and Josh Thompson, uh, both finishing at the rear of the field. Josh Thompson, 44th, uh, 11 laps down in the end. Okay then, uh, very eventful race once more. And um, Alex, well, you've got the big job now. Who's going to be on pole? The reverse grid wheel. Who is going to be on pole, Adam? Did uh, Adam Hadfield, did he survive? Did he finish the race? Yes, he did. Oh, he finished He finished in the pits and he wasn't disqualified. So I reckon with him being one right. lap down, he should be okay. In then and see where we end up. to fall again. Again, it's another relatively small one. 28th it's going to end up as... 28 is Scott Malcolm. Ah, uh, so he missed out last time. But first, you don't succeed in all that, and as it really helps because um, for race one, a lot of the automatic drivers were at the back, so uh, this might work out well. Rizzo second, Michael Blake first, Ross McFarlane uh, to make it a automatic uh, Northern Lights Racing derby. It'll be starting in fourth, and uh, Michael Hall in fifth. And just behind them, you can see in the next sort of few drivers, you've got Chepilevsky, Baxter, Berridge, Katz, Cuniff, McFadden, Sutton, and then Baker. So, um, very, very entertaining indeed. And we will see you very, very shortly when that will take place here on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. In a few minutes' time, we'll be back with action from round three of the iRacing MSA British Sim Racers Touring Car Championship.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but it can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Welcome back to the BSRTC. We're on the grid here at Mid Ohio. Andrew Woodhouse, Adam Bath, and Alex Simpson with you. And um, Adam, 30 seconds away from what should be a great race three. Yeah, we couldn't. We didn't think it could get any colder, but it has uh, by one degree. <laughs> it's now 18 degrees. Uh, Scott Malcolm on the pole, Rizzo second, Michael Blake third, Ross McFarlane fourth, Michael Hall fifth, Chepelevsky in sixth. He's one to watch out for definitely. Uh, Stephen Baxter seventh, Lee Berridge eighth, Cats up again in the top ten in ninth, and Colin Cunniff rounding out the top ten. Sutton and Baker they're starting 12th and 13th. They're going to be ones to watch as well. Sutton gained 25 positions in the last race. He's only got to get 12 to get to the front here. Race two winner, George Simmons, starts 28th. Here we go then. Red lights are on here at Mid-Ohio. Green, green, green. The green light is on. 44 Kier Optimus away from the line. All get away well. A great start by Rizzo. He might take oh. the lead here, Chesare Rizzo is sideways. It's the cold conditions for you. Now it's all going to be a bottleneck because Michael Hall is having to... Oh, there's oh. a car flying through the air in the background. Oh, no, it's big, kicked off in the front. They crashed at Rizzo into the wall. And, and that's Michael Blake. Michael Blake. Oh, dear. They're all sliding around. Oh, and Bond's last like tracking. three wide with some of them. Gash yeah, setting up to... Uh, what's that? Ninth. Ninth, I think, as uh, we go down the back straight. Might um, be 10th after McFadden's got... Oh, no, oh it's all right. McFadden going for the lead. Here comes Michael Hall around the outside as well as we go for the right hand. We, oh, oh Hall into wide. McFarlane. And here's Chapolevsky. Northern Lights racing three cars in the top six. There's McFarlane again. And behind the whole DME. Oh, and that's number 36. Off. Andreas Katz hitting uh, lead carriage, maybe. Back to the oh, only crash. car. Two Northern Lights racing cars hitting each other. Only be McFarlane and Cuniff, I guess, as uh, we go up the hill. Or maybe Berridge as well. Uh, Cuniff and... Yeah, Cuniff and Berridge. And uh, Katz trying to get past Berridge. Oh. He's just hit Lee Berridge. Oh, I thought Berridge was disqualified for a brief moment there. The car was just uh, glitching in and out there. I think you are, car's flying through the field as well. But after the first lap, then it's oh. Scott Malcolm. Sutton, how does he save? Oh, no, he doesn't. Oh, he's off. Oh, oh they're reversing. all sideways into the first corner as well. Yeah, all that was going on out there. Did I we find... Sorry, go on. I was just going to say that Sutton, I think he thought he was clear and ducked to the left and unfortunately got hit. Did I'm we find get, out... Find Alex, him so I can get a replay. Alex, did we find out what happened at the start? No, we should... I think we'll have to review that one at the, um, at the end of the race because it was a pretty big one. And it bookmarked or something. Uh, Baker... Uh, is still in the race. He just blinked out of my I think time of screen. Um, I think yeah, it he's may have been um, the car flying through the air. I think could have been Christian Rose. I don't know. It was pretty hard to see. Well then, uh, stay to play. Scott oh, Malcolm the, leads. Malcolm, Marnie Moore. Michael Hall's going for the lead. Through. Happy trying to go with him. And now here comes the Scottish car, Northern Lights racing car of, um, of McFarlane. Now he's out wide. Taking the lead decisively, then Scott Malcolm in P2, and it's still in Chepolesky. He's really looking for a way through. Cars still sliding around, they haven't fully regained their tyre pressure, Alex. No, uh, very cold. And this, oh. this just the nature of the track with all the undulations are going to. Cars going to get a little bit of air, and it's going to make it a whole load worse. Did you see that massive Newton's cradle ladder at the final corner? If there was a better version of it, yeah. Um, going through turn one then, lap three, Michael Hall leads, Scott Malcolm second, third is Chepolevsky, so it's advantage CQR here in race three. Uh, Chepolevsky trying desperately to get past his automat car, I can see, and here he goes, up the inside into the keyhole, he's still out of control, Malcolm turns in, he's not giving him any space at all, the automat car, and they're going to go wheel to wheel on the exit, Chepi trying to ease him out on the exit there, they're going to go wheel to wheel down the back straight. Chepi will be absolutely chomping at the bit to get a win here, after what happened in uh, race one. Got sort of buffeted around by the CQR lot, gave some back, didn't work. Ended up um, crashing, finishing somewhere down the field. Now he's going to go after Michael Hall's lead. Wheel to wheel between Stephen Baxter and Berridge, that's Baxter through. Car 48 back into seventh, Lee Berridge down to eighth. Uh, ninth is Forstein Helgerson, he's gained five positions. Baker behind in tenth has gained three. I think Kip Stevens might have been a victim of the same thing 
Alex, that happened in race one because I think he may have started from the pits and he's one minute and 20 down now because of that. Really? He's only five seconds or so in front of the leaders. That issue with the pit lane, we had it and uh, the Ritma Tech at Watkins Glen with the safety car as a Baker now tries to get past the sim gear car of, um, of Helgerson, which he does. Well, because as well, when, when cars are starting so far back, um, Adam, with the, you know a few corners before the start finish line, then accidents can happen early on before they've even reached the, the green flag. Imagine if we had a medical car in this series. Oh dear, it wouldn't ever move. <laughs> there goes uh, on the inside, Scott Malcolm on the fellow Scottish driver of uh, Ross McFarlane. Like I said, the driver of then, never mind. As um, it comes, Andreas Katz as well. He's involved in that. He's got some damage oh, to the front of his gear. Oh, no. The problem. Oh, that was uh, Scott Malcolm nearly getting pitched out of the way by Cuniff. And here oh. comes 48, Baxter. Oh, my goodness, Baxter. The inside would have moved that was. Can he keep it, though? Oh, oh. Who's, no. He's turning into the old firm here as Autonek and Northern Lights Racing go at it. Lee Berridge is absolutely, I was going to say a different word than him, so they smashed one of the, uh, I don't even know who it was, I wasn't, uh, it was such a hard hit. Well, in oh, the it's all kicking off here, Smolenski has just hit Lee Berridge, and here comes Daniel Kraft, here comes David Baker, these guys are going to be careful that they don't end up in a pile. Selling Cepelevski briefly led, oh, I was going to say that, save that for a little bit later, but Michael Hall's back in the lead, um, I don't know how that happened. But um, yeah, all cra craziness kicking off inside the top 10. Look at this line as they go for the final corner, this massive pack snaking its way for the final corner, too wide as well, that's Helgerson, it could be three wide, as uh, here comes another Sim Gear car, that's 47, McIntyre. Line skip the inside of Berridge as well. Oh, that's Baker and McFadden. Oh, McFadden, he's got nowhere to oh, go. Crash. Oh, oh, crash. Oh, crash. 25, that's Kiba. Kiba. Bonds has just jammed on the anchors Possibly. to look to get out of it. Possibly Helgerson, I think. Oh, Baker's going wheel to wheel with Berridge. Three it's wide, Berridge, Baker, and Blackhole on the bees. They're swarming their way down the back straight. Ah, very good. Uh, Stuart, Stuart McFadden and Alex has managed to get ahead of this melee. Yeah. Oh, couple of corners, he might get himself completely clear. Baker around the outside. Oh. Hammers nearly got involved there. Oh, Baker up the by, inside. Oh, who was that wide oh, move by Baker? Don't know, I didn't see it. The 43 of Foggy in the mix as well. He's still in the top in the overall category despite being an AM driver. Harrod and Berridge side by side. Oh, contact. Oh, he very nearly quarter panelled him. Oh, he's through Harrod and he takes a bit of Berridge with him. Also through is the Apex car of Gore. There's Sutton. Sutton's. Uh, is that, that's not Sutton. Sutton it's Bun. Yeah. Oh, it's Bun. Sorry, it's the same colours. Oh, no, it's Sutton. Well, Sutton is in 20th. Yeah, yeah he is in 20th. Sutton Sutton after that massive Bun. here. We've got the same colour scheme. They've gone for the blue bumpers, yeah. Right, the front of each other then. Oh. Right to the pits goes Berridge. Uh, unfortunately, that might be a meatball flag then for the uh, the Northern Lights racing car. Maybe suspension damage from that last hit from Pete Harrod. That surprised me as the Kirox was actually streamed through the, through the shot then. Kepelevsky to the outside of Hall going into the keyhole. Hall doing a good job for the, for the CQR team as good his comrades are not too far away. Great exit, as you said. Yeah, here he comes then, Chepolevsky. He goes to the outside then. Had the pleasure of meeting Stelian Chepolevsky. Alex is very mild mannered, but not so much on the track sometimes as he goes around the outside of Hall. Oh, oh and they both run a tiny bit wide. Hall's doing exactly what he needs to to keep himself in the lead, and that has been very Brilliant. good around the outside there. It's great from Michael Hall. This is helping Kip Stevens as well, because it's stopping him from going a lap down. Super Stephen Baxter as well. It's absolutely outstanding. Where's going to be the move, Alex, if Chepelevsky's going to get it done? Yeah, I'm not sure. Hall looks like he's um, doing a great job defending there. I think yeah, Stelian just needs oh. to absolutely maximise a run. Oh, he's on the grass. <laughs> and that is what you call trying to maximise a run. Hall just but needs to continue doing exactly what he's doing. He's driving a beautiful race at the moment. Even Baxter was six tenths of a second quicker than these two on the last lap. Uh, that shows you what's been going on between these guys, and he's right with them now. So know, the lead two is now a lead four. He'll, we know he'll go for a move. <laughs> 48. If he wants to live up to Jimmy Johnson's number, then um, here we go. 
in fact, it's almost a front five. Andreas Katz is not too far away either. He's only 1.3 seconds behind us. Chepi to the outside again into the keyhole. And Baxter might take it's up that gonna, gap. It's not going to work because oh, there we go. That's oh, happened. Oh, there we go. It's happened. And, oh, and Czepileski persists. Persistence pays off on this occasion as Stephen Baxter has to yield. He has to slot back into third place, but I don't think he's going to yield for long because he's got a good slipstream. Down the back straight in towards turn four. Oh. And, he's, oh. and everyone's very late on the brakes there. Here comes Cuniff. And if Baxter's oh. going to consider the chrome horn, here he does. Oh, uh, Malcolm's dropping down. Uh, Malcolm's dropped down a few positions. Uh, don't know what's happened oh. there. He was in seventh. He's been passed oh. by both Kraft and Smolensky. They have gone off. Malcolm, middle sector. Great job from Michael Hall. Alex, absolutely perfect driving at the moment. Five more laps to keep it up. It's not going to be easy, that's for sure. Yeah, not for that long. He's going to be looking at the relative, thinking five laps, really? As uh, they go through the <laughs> final corner. I feel like a very, very long five laps. You can see cars in front of them that have got damage, I think. Uh, John Roberts, oh uh, no, it's not John Roberts, it's Nathan Davies, desperately trying to avoid a third straight disqualification on the final lap. Coincidentally, uh, Alex, that's roughly when these guys are going to catch the lap traffic. <laughs> yeah. Oh, goodness me, Nathan Davis. Um, yeah, they're right with him. Here comes Stephen Baxter having a little look on the inside of Chepilevsky. All oh, the might run into the back oh, of the meters. Each other. Bang, yeah. bang, bang. Bumper to bumper. They're, they're all hitting hole. Nudgy, 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 I think it calls for. Smashy, Who's that? That's Andreas Katz at the back of the group. 1.2 seconds now between the top five. Ross McFarlane is just a second behind that as well. So uh, they keep it coming. It's a great run by Chepilevsky. He's got a good slipstream here on hole. Hole. Beautiful oh. on the brakes. Chepileski backing it in like a motor GP rider there. You can see there, Mike, yeah, Michael Hall parking it on the apex as well. So they're all doing exactly what they need to do: a to defend and b to uh, push the attack forward. Superb driving, isn't it? Really, really is. They're all um, doing as good as they've got, inches apart. No real openings for these guys. In the different lines, you can see we've also got AM contenders in here. Stephen Baxter, he's got the AM. Uh, on the number plate there, he's in third. You can gonna just catch, about see it. I'm going to catch Nathan Davis very shortly as well. So Davis will be um, hiding behind his fingers, oh, I think. Another lock-up and another bit of um, concertina ring there going through the final corner. Yeah, where's it? Somebody's going to have to try something, I think, slightly um, unorthodox, maybe, if they want to win the race. However, I will say this. Nobody will lose out here, Alex, if they stay where they are, because it's still going to be a very, very solid top six finish. Um, and that's really what they need more than necessarily coming out and winning the race. Of course, they want to do that, but podium credits and top fives, that's what you need to get into oh. the showdown, and that's what Baxter's trying to do now. Baxter trying, trying to get, on the trying other side. To get a podium. Oh, the cutback on the exit as well, so he's going to pick up the slipstream. Chappie isn't as close to Michael Hall as he's been on the previous tours of this circuit. And look, here comes, Cra here comes um, the CQR cars in the background. Uh, Dan Craft is there. Oh, and Baxter looked like he moved oh. off the line slightly into Cuniff. And that's a Katz are through then. Katz trying to go around the outside of Cuniff as a result. Prime, Cuniff's got a great line though. Katz trying to get inside into the next part. They've got a bang wheel surely here. Katz has to yield to Cuniff. And now here comes, that's Ross McFarlane. McFarlane. He's out and of nowhere. Kraft. Dan Craft entered Dan Craft. He's joined the party. On the inside of McFarlane. Don't count out Alex Smolenski as well. Multiple time race winner in the series. Speared in for double figures and wins himself, Smolenski. Oh, and Kraft, Kraft. took 12 wins in 2016. Kraft oh, through. Wow. Take Into that, he says. McFarlane. And I wonder if that could be suspension damage for McFarlane. He just got forced out wide. But um, he's going to carry on. He hasn't got much damage, to be fair, Ross McFarlane, compared to the guys oh, around Chepileski him. with a big run here on Hall. But Hall just on the brakes. Late enough, it's it's some of that. Of course, he's always been a good driver, Michael Hall, Alex, but surely working with Ash Sutton. I've drove guys against there. Hall. Do you remember Stop the um, GT series that we run, the yeah, BSR yeah. one? And I tell you, we had a great battle oh, against oh, Hall. I think no. it was a VIR. Max has been hit, Alex. I think. Uh, he's okay. He saved the car, but um, oh, it's going to free well. up somewhat Chepilevsky to have a run sort of without having to worry about Baker. But yeah. Paul was so good at defence oh, in that race. I tried yeah. everything to get by him. He's got it. solid. Cats up the middle. We, oh. we knew Cats could get through small gaps, Alex, but that's taking the mic. <laughs> as nimble as a cat. 
that always lands on his feet usually. Oh, oh maybe not. He there. doesn't. <laughs> That's one thing Cats doesn't. He gets a lot of bad oh, luck, I find. Oh, no. one of the nine lives gone. Oh, that oh, might oh. be one from Cuniff. He might have caught Pops it there. That's a Cuniff gone, but this has allowed Chapelevsky and Michael Hall to crack on on their own. That We're going to have one lap to go. It certainly wasn't the Cats meow, was it? As there it comes. But who's going to be the cat that got the cream at the end of the race? There we go, well done. <laughs> a lock up at the oh, rear. Hall going a bit wide, but nothing to worry about there. Lap traffic just in front of them. That's Nathan Davis and Kip Steven. Credit to Stephen Baxter. Despite all that went on with him on that lap, he's still with Stalin Chapelevsky and Michael Hall as we get the final lap flag, the white flag. That, that piece of cloth. By, by the way, 20 drivers covered by nine seconds. The gap actually came down on that lap because of all the shenanigans at the front of the race. The BSRTT at its best, isn't it? Unbelievable. Fantastic stuff. Right then, Chaffee, you've got one Michael, shot. Can Michael Hall hang on for one more lap? It'll be a great win. Might be his best win, Michael Hall, if he can take this one. But Stanley Chepolevsky, the man who's been a veteran of this series for a few years now. You've got Stephen Baxter, who's new to it. Andreas Katz, a two-time champion. All fairly close and all trying to capitalise on one mistake, maybe one ball opening. See how deep Chepolevsky went in there. He was trying to get just onto the back of Michael Hall, but I think his chances are starting to run out. Where is the traffic? It is. They might just get to it. Yeah, that'll probably be enough to disqualify Davies, no doubt. Yeah, McIntyre's <laughs> so. dropping down the order. I don't know what's happened to him, but yeah, here they go, final sector. Pepe could have one last should lunge. Should be Hall. Though. Should be Hall. He's got every opportunity here. He can have a lunge into this right-hander. The car has to open the door. He doesn't. Oh, he, oh, does. he does! Kepilevsky on the inside, but I don't think he's going to do it. It's going to be Michael Hall, surely. What a win. What a performance from Hall and CQR. Great Next drive race from three, Hall. three, brilliant. Yeah, like I say, he's one of the hardest people to overtake. Had the pleasure. And, uh, yeah, fantastic. Well deserved of that win. Not easy. He'll happily sit there and say he wasn't the quickest driver out there, but when you can defend like that, well, you know, you don't need to be. Awesome race. Absolutely brilliant. And um, the top 21 covered by 11.2. Because by the time we finished saying, um, <clears throat> you know, what a great performance as he crosses the line, and we flip back to try and find someone who hasn't crossed the line, and we're down in 30 odd place. Oh, we've got Stevens and Davis still going, so it's still time for Nathan to be disqualified. Come on, Nathan, we're going to get to the end here. I think he will. I think he's decided to not bother Kip Stevens on the last lap for that reason. Hey, he could be a reverse good pole. Uh, did Hackerson finish the race? Hackerson did finish the race. So Hackerson would be reverse grid pole, but Davis could be P2 here, unless Stevens. Well, we could put we could pull out his his actual grid number, so he could still get it. Uh, not if he finishes 33rd, we will. Well, this is true. <laughs> Need more segments on the wheel. As uh, here comes Kip Stevenson, he's going to get 30 second place. He will have the chance of his number being pulled out of the uh, reverse grid. Well, we don't pull any numbers out of the wheel. Of the wheel deciding that uh, 30 <laughs> second is going to be on pole. Ackerson, if it's a full, and um, yeah, what a that was a fantastic race again, wasn't it? Three three out of three so far tonight. Uh, but Alex, we said the other night that the racing was great and then um, the last two races happened. So I'm not going to uh, count the chickens on that one just yet. Well, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Let us know then, mate, who's going to be um, who's going to be spun on to pole. Do the results first? I don't know. Oh, sorry, we could do the results yeah. first. Sorry, Let me mate. do my thing. Uh, no, uh, Michael Hall takes the win. Uh, Stanley Chapolevsky second, third Stephen Baxter, fourth Andreas Katz, the top four separated by less than three quarters of a second. Uh, Dan Kraft in fifth. 6th Ross McFarlane, 7th Alex Malensky, 8th Colin Cuniff, 9th Scott Malcolm and 10th Dave Baker. Stuart McFadden, one of, the, very, one of the, only, yeah, the only car in the field to finish where he started and that was 11th. 12th uh, for Jake Blackhall, 13th for uh, Nicole Foggy, 14th Pete Harrod, Laidler finished 15th ahead of Richard Gore. Matt Bunn finished in 17th, 18th for Ash Sutton despite the, uh, the moment or the crash basically on the exit of the final corner. Uh, Sven Glatzel 19th after starting in 32nd. Uh, biggest mover is uh, Matt 
Bun, uh, well, and uh, yeah, he finished in 17th. Uh, Adam Hadfield, 20th, 21st for Pete Newman, 22nd Craig Evans, 23rd for Mark Woodhouse, 24th for Dan Hunt after starting in 38th. Jack McIntyre, 25th. Laura Bond, 26th. Stuart Atkinson in 27th. Max Wright finishing in 28th. Vorstein Helgerson, 29th. And uh, Rob Graham finishing in 30th. 31st for Julian Janowski. The top 31 separated by only 33 seconds. And then Kip Stevens and Nathan Davis on the tail end of the, of the lead lap, finishing 32nd and 30. Third, Ben Hackerson, 34th, one lap down. He was a classified finisher. We will beat the foot, the reverse grid pole if we get a full. And then the cars that didn't finish the race, Matthew Kiba, five laps down, had that crash on the run up to the keyhole hairpin uh, earlier on. Lee Berridge went off with him, I think. Simmons, Whitehead, so two boosted cars out of the race there as well. In fact, three boosted cars out. Of, oh, Hackerson, one lap down. Uh, Roberts. Yep, yeah, there's the three boosted cars. Uh, Josh Thompson, seven laps down. Jamie Fluke hasn't gone well at all since race one. Uh, Michael Blake, ten laps down along with Rizzo. And Christian Rose finishing in 44th, 11 laps down. All right, so um, quite a bit of attrition in that race, actually, Alex. And, um, and now, sorry, I'll, as I jump the gun, I'll now let you uh, do the reverse grid wheel. And uh, hey, you can tell us how the grid are going to be lining up for the next race. Let me do my thing. Here we go. <laughs> Spin around. Gotta get your gimmicks in. This is it. Oh, there goes the fall, we've missed it, but it could be a large one. Oh, yeah, easy. 40th place. 40th? 40th, did you say that? Oh, yeah, that, uh, that will default then to uh, Ben Hackerson, who's, who's in 34th, because he's the highest classified finisher. So he'll be on pole, Nathan Davis will be on the front row. That's what trundling around to the back does for you. Uh, Kip Stevens will be in third, <laughs> Eugene Janowski fourth, and uh, Rob Graham in fifth. I'm sorry, Nathan. <laughs> there we go. Um, on that bombshell, then we'll be back for race four um, in just a few minutes' time here on Apex Racing TV as the BSRTC rolls along. We'll see you in a bit.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but it can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight. And that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night. So you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT Series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Simulated racing can be awesome, but can also be kind of a free-for-all. Interestingly, auto racing faced the same problem in its earlier days. Whether it was on the back roads, the beaches, or the city streets, the racing was fun. But there was always a certain level of chaos and danger, until some folks came along and put some order to all of this. Stuff like official racetracks, regulations about weight and equipment, and enforcement of standards. That's what gave us high-speed excitement, fast-paced action, and photo finishes. That's when racing became racing. The guys over at iRacing.com have made the same transformation in the world of sim racing. Sure, they've got the most accurate tracks and realistic cars out there, but that's just the start. See, iRacing analyzes the performance and results of each driver in every race. So you can be sure you're always placed in races where the competition will be tight, and that those reckless drivers who ruin it for us all are kept in the pits. Not to mention that with over 45,000 active members already in their vast community, you can find races day and night, so you can always get in on the action. You can even join a league of your favorite series. And since updates are always automatic, you don't have to worry about software and can focus on the track. Zip up your fire suit and check out iRacing.com. Welcome back everybody, final race of the evening here at Mid-Ohio on the BSRTC. Andrew Woodhouse, Alex Simpson, Adam Bath with you. And um, Adam, well, Ben Axon's on pole, but I do not like the look of that at all. No, uh, the camouflage car is becoming should, camouflage. It really should start from the pits, to be fair. I mean, in all seriousness, uh, the drivers are reporting back saying that that's the worst they've ever seen this connection. So, all he's got a responsibility, um, Adam. Go on. Sorry off. to interrupt Sorry, there, but you just can't race against someone like that. Well, so he's already been hit he... off once because yeah, of exactly. You don't know where he is. Like you say, he got knocked off. It's not, you know, it wasn't. I can't remember. Was it um, was it Bun? I think it was Bun, wasn't it? It wasn't Bun's fault. Yeah. And he's yeah. alongside Davis, who will get disqualified at the drop of a hat. So we're gonna have a great. <laughs> Poor Nathan. We're gonna have a great start here, I'm sure. Better focus on Nathan actually, because uh... otherwise we won't see anything. Yeah, otherwise we'll just lose the cameras, won't we? Here we go. go. Here come the lights. You're not seeing from the pit lane, by the way. Okay, well, he's going to be a while getting out of there if it first races or anything to go by. Is the green light now. Final race of the evening gets underway. Remember, cold tyres, boys. It's only 19 degrees out there. Hackerson does lead into the first corner. Stevens and Davis resuming their battle from race two. I can already hear some cars off the track. And oh, oh Woodhouse! Oh, someone's in the air. It's Woodhouse. Big one. It's the same corner as the last... Oh one where the cars what uh, barging his way through Rob Graham up into second place go on, go on. Graham having a good start there up from uh, P5 on the grid annoyingly for Davis and such like they can't really get any close to Hackerson because they're too scared of him just merging with their car so he's got that's a 1.2 second lead um, Ash oh. 16. But, oh, oh no that's um, that's Helgeson oh, oh, no, that was Graham. it's into Graham it's, it's raining down there <laughs> Heading cars. Oh, oh Graham's yeah. going to come back on. Oh, no, no, he's not. I think that's the wise decision. Yeah, that's um, Ash rejoin. Sutton's already making gains out there. Hashtag gains. And, uh, oh, dear me. All fake news. Fake news, alternative facts. Well, the, the fact is that uh, Ben Axton's leading oh, the race and nobody that? can see where he is. I think that was Berridge. Berridge has been in the wars tonight as well. I've seen him posting earlier on. Yeah, he's been on, on the, the uh, on the group and then been on um, the keyboard of it. I mean, like much. a wrecking ball himself. <laughs> I know he's been doing the same thing. He's been doing things to the other drivers gone. today. Hackerson is gone. Hackerson's back. He's back. Oh, okay. There he goes. There oh, he honestly, is. when there Davis goes. gets to him, there's there going to be something <laughs> almighty goes on. It's like, hey, I'm back again. Oh, home already? Yes. <laughs> uh -oh, oh, look, look out, jumping. Hackerson. Um, <laughs> Well, Nathan Davis on my timing screen is now being shown as the leader. So, um, has Hackerson missed a lap? Has the connection meant... No, no, he's okay, I think. Okay. On my screen. Maybe just on the timing. I think the timing does that, doesn't it? You've got on the... You well, on if you're being out over the line, I have seen it, not count. So... <laughs> Because uh, online Hackerson is... No, no, I have seen that as well. He's being shown as in 39th place on my timing screen, well, so... Well, it's possible, actually, but he, it looks like he did cross the line. 
Um, he'll be oh, he he certainly but did, and he awful. is certainly that out is still not... on the track. You can see yeah. him. I'm sorry, oh, who's that? The, what happened to that rule? What happened to that rule about if your internet connection was that bad, you couldn't be racing? What happened to that rule? Because that but is it's appalling. only really if you're in the pack, aren't you? Or in Hell. you know, end of the minute, he's 1.9 seconds clear. So you know, there's oh, not an issue there. That's um, that's Daniel Hunt using the chrome horn to get past Max Wright. Oh, Dan Hunt, um, yeah, Dan Hunt going through. I saw what happened to Atkinson, Alex. He absolutely caught um, uh, Mullard off the track. Not Ivan Mullard, I don't think. There's Here. smoke, I can see smoke. Here in Blackhall. Oh, Blackhall. Jake Blackhall. Is that an engine? I don't think so. Oh, no, he's all right. It's just in the wall. Rob Graham is out of the race, so he was in second briefly, but um, not oh, anymore. I'm, well, he got he got taken out by Helgerson, didn't he? Oh, yeah. Flying, so the, yeah, flying the across straight. the first couple of corners. Uh, where's Sutton in all this anyway? Still 16 somehow. That's, that's, uh, yeah, only one position gained actually from Ash Sutton compared to everyone else. Katz has gained seven, 17. Maybe he was too busy getting out of the way of all that nonsense that happened at the um, at the bottom end of the circuit. Simmons gained gained 18 positions since the start of the race. Yeah, one of the boosted motorsports cars that's firmly um, visible. Right then, Richard Gore trying to get past the Automat car of Max Wright as they go down the back straight. Just in front of them, you can see that the two ProSim cars of Hunt and Bond are pretty close oh, to right, each other as well. Mistake, oh, yeah, round the outside goes ball, the yellow mirrors. This could be the position, this could be seven. Inside. Right, he's got that long run around the outside though. And he's. Yeah, got just about through there. Thanks to Hadfield, also uh, Matt Bunn is there. Harrod and McFadden and Cunniff. Katz and Kraft and Sutton. Or maybe that's why Sutton hasn't gained many positions, because it's some very fast drivers in front of him. Lost quite a few guys as well. Blackwell's now gone. Rob Graham, Chepalewski, Mark Woodhouse, Pete Newman, uh, Glaxon oh. and Laidler all retired and someone oh. around and then rejoins right. in a big it's, way. It's Who great. was that? Hadfield, 52. Oh, because oh. it all started because Max Wright got hit by, um, by Hadfield. Who think got oh, hit by Matt Bunn? Wheel to wheel here. This is 104. Oh, it's just in front of them. There's a ProSim cars going at it, but it's a Bun versus the Automat car of Wright going into the keyhole hairpin. Right on the inside, Bun trying to go around the outside using that slightly newer tarmac to his advantage. Right, keeps to the inside, loses the momentum though. And Matt Bun's going to go through. Pete Harrod now. He's also stalking the Automat Knock Hill car. Pete Harrod for Race Hub with CQR. Who were the leading outfit for them last season. Now the B team of sorts, but doing a fantastic job as a team. Newman, Smith, oh. also there as well. Nathan Davis has went off at uh, the end of the back straight. Nothing major. He just went and off and came well, off again. Sorry. Yeah, later out. Newman also out as well. Oh, what's that? Oh, it's a uh, Dan Hunt and Richard Gore that were close. I saw that just then. I heard some um, biting. Good race for pro sim actually, isn't it? I mean, three of the um, three of the top five there. Axon absolutely flying at the front. But, Six, um, sorry. Yeah, two point four seconds clear, mate. Absolutely flying, like you say. Um, that's when you don't have to worry about your connection. Well, no one's around you. <laughs> do and you don't. Yeah, I know it, what you're saying. It was lucky, wasn't he? Really, because they battled behind in their first lap, so he was able to break break free. And from Dimsy. there on, he's just been able to pull away. Stevens in P4 or Bond in fifth, Dan Hunt in sixth. It's a good run, for, very good run for Pro Sim. It's Richard Gore in seventh, eighth, Matt Bunt. Uh, Ash Sutton has got past Dan Kraft. It's now into uh, P14, 14, Adam, yeah. Yeah, three positions gained. Next up is Andreas Katz, who's gained 18 positions. Uh, Sutton yeah. not too far away from the top 10 now, as Alex Malensky has dropped a few positions. I'm going to get, it is going to get tough for Sutton though. Katz, Cuniff, McFadden, Harrod. Although Harrod will probably get let him through, to be honest. Oh, um, Hackerson slowing down. The gap's coming down on my timing screen. It's gone down to just under a second oh, yeah. all of a sudden. Big problems for Hackerson. I wonder if that's just rearing its ugly head a little bit more, the internet issue that he's having. Yeah, it was two seconds at the start of the lap. Two seconds plus, two and a half, but now it's eight temps. Look at McIntyre as well. How he's closed in. Number 47, Tim Gear car. Very close to the back of Davies. Could the connection be deceiving us in terms of what the actual gap is? I don't think so now. It's quite visible. So yeah. Unless he's got capability of time trial, uh, time trial, time travel, I'm not sure. 
Time travel isn't a new feature on iRacing, racing. Time travel is. <laughs> Got McIntyre, great run here. Adam, he might have a chance at Davis into the hairpin. Opportunity for second position here. We've had a win oh, for Apex. We've had a win for CQR, a win for Apex, a win for uh, for boosted. for boosted. We could be on for two wins for boosted here if Hackerson's able to keep it on the track for the next uh, six laps. I do think McIntyre's quick enough to get there though? If he oh. gets past Nathan, Katz has been um, has been shoveled out of the way and is now losing. By, has lost a few positions. Sutton, was it? it might have been by Ash Sutton, I think. Oh, it's yeah. to uh, Daytona 2015. Um, just say that really. Um, well be. Um, which got, I've got to say as well, um, Alex. Uh, congratulations to um, our old uh, teammate Lando Norris, who's uh, going to be testing the McLaren the, after the Hungarian Grand Prix. Yeah, exactly. Nice for him. He's doing. Yeah, I mean, he's having a great career in his real races, isn't he? So going to be know, very good, he, uh, isn't he? As well. Yeah, deserves to um, to have a shot. Amazingly talented. He's going to be um, going to be there in F1. I'm sure of it. Oh, without a doubt. At some point, very. Very quick driver, Formula 3, currently doing quite well in that, so, yeah, I, I think, um, and it's good that, uh, of course, he's a team red line now. You can see if I can get him on my motorsport manager career. <laughs> some, some, not now, but soon, I reckon. Uh, so, up the, oh, I'm looking, I thought the inside was looking Matt Bunn on Richard Gore, but not quite. That's about for seventh position. You've got Laura Oh, Susan's off! Sorry, um, so this is All right, so he's gone off big time. In his own making, or, oh, that's a crash with uh, Colin Cunniff. Cunniff's quarter panelled in there. I was just clicking down the order and I clicked on Ash Sutton and he was in the gravel. Um, caught me by surprise. Uh, yeah, quarter panel through turn one. Lost a few places there. He's lost that to Berridge and Baker. Oh, he's, oh, hit, he's uh, hit. He's hit another Northern Lights he's racing hit car. He's 20. Ross oh, McFarlane. Oh, what's the point of. No. Oh, that was rubbish. I'm going to say that was a bit of rubbish between those two. I'm not sure what was going on there. They had a minor collision going into the hairpin, and then, um, yeah, Sutton was on the grass, and then. Um, he seemed to keep driving, didn't he? To be honest. Yeah. Oh well. Um, Hunt versus Gore versus Bun. You're right, that was rubbish. Yep. Get out of it, you know, and the driver in here, you don't spin. Oh, that was a little bit of, um, maybe he didn't know which Northern Lights racing car it was that hit him. I mean, that might, might um, maybe he had a he had a face windy. full of the actual Northern Lights in his car, um, which Aurora Borealis <laughs> in your car? Yes. <laughs> well, you're a strange fellow, Adam, but you stay my good hat. <laughs> oh, well, look, Dan Hunt's, <laughs> What's uh, well, going on? Da Dan Hunt would have almost been steaming there in the car as a um, <laughs> as a Richard Gore would have gone by. I think you're right. I think Hackerson's time took a while to register there as he was lagging over the uh, finish line. Definitely possible. And he's only um, three quarters of a second now ahead of Davis, Alex, and Davis catching very, very slowly. Um, but he is managing to stave off McIntyre in the, in the in the process. Yeah, it's very close. I think you're looking more behind than he is forward at the minute as um, we're looking at Hoare. Um, Hoare? Gore. <laughs> 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 oh. oh dear me, well, <laughs> don't want Sir Alex Simpson's mind this Thursday evening, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, oh off, goes, off goes Davies. Oh, he's back on. Oh dear. Well, that's got to be in the blooper reel, hasn't it, that one? Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Uh, top 10. Um, ben Hackerson needs Nathan Davis by a second now. Um, <laughs> As, uh, yeah, as uh, Jack McIntyre is in third, fourth is Kip Stevens, fifth Laura Bond, sixth Dan Hunt, seventh is Richard Gore, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes. uh, <laughs> oh, I'm God, I'm sorry. And uh, Harrod. <laughs> That's the end of Alex Simpson, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, dear. Anyway, um, oh, meanwhile, uh, Kip uh, Stevens has managed to get himself a good, uh, I can tell you that good position has been... in no man's land, really, P4. Ash has been disqualified, um, by the way. Oh, dear. Um, I believe well, so. Anyway. I'm not surprised. To be fair, there are at least two forexes in that one sort of half a half a lap. Oh, it was with another Northern Lights racing car, believe it or not. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, he, he, 
it, the Northern Lights Racing Car, he was wheel to wheel with. He got forced out wide off. Oh, not forced out wide. Actually, he, he just went off uh, on the exit. Uh, nothing to do with the Northern Lights Racing Car, and, <laughs> and then uh, he gets disqualified. Well, we, we're going to have a battle for second position here, very, very shortly, and. Um, I do think McIntyre's got the pace, Alex. Oh, oh Hackerson, Hackerson mistake now. And this is where we're going to see if the connection's going to come into play. Down to a tenth of a second, just under a tenth. You know what? He's not blinked for a while. No, I know. It's fine now. Now that he's around the other cars, amazingly, it's sorted itself out a little bit. Right then, two laps to go when we get to the line. I wonder if Hackerson's just struggling with his tyres a little bit because that just ended up being... Uh, Ended up sliding, didn't it? The rear end just didn't want to know. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah, there we go. Oh, there he goes again. Oh, and Nathan Davis Aww. goes in too deep. Davis has no have idea a clue. going through the corner where he was. Here comes McIntyre. They can't overtake him, that's the issue. <laughs> well, they can try. McIntyre's trying to go around the outside the keyhole. Oh, oh he's oh, dear me, he almost overlapped him. It's very difficult though, isn't it, in all seriousness, to kind of make a move when, when it's like this. This is one of the uh, one of the dangers of uh, online racing, Alex. Is this sometimes does happen. Yeah. You've got to try and deal with it somehow. Bitch in the BSR matrix, as it were. Uh, what, do you, what do you think they should do, though, Adam? If, if, would you just try to drive as normal? Oh, 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 oh a bit of contact. Davis is trying to be as cautious as he can because he doesn't want to collide with Hackerson, but McIntyre, he's the one that's... Oh, that's... Oh, oh, he's disqualified. Uh, I thought he was then. Uh, but McIntyre's the one that's like, come on, guys, get a move on because he can sense a, sense a win here. So McIntyre is, is doing everything he can at the moment. There's two laps to go. It's like the last lap in two corners, yeah. So, and, and, I mean, and now hackerson has got, it's got the lead back up to eight tenths of a second, nearly. Yeah, so how it ebbs and flows in this BSR TC sometimes. Kip Stevens still hanging on to P4. Oh, it's a bit for Laura Bond as well at the moment. Baker's down uh, a lot of positions. He was in 20th. He's now in oh, 23rd. He's lost three positions. Never mind me. I wonder if, he's at, I wonder if the Season 7 champions had a crash uh, somewhere. Ackerson's connection has just got to hold on for another three and a half kilometres or so. We've lost Josh Thompson as well somewhere along, oh, the, along like, the way a few laps ago. Three, three races in a row, is that now where he's not finished? Hasn't been yeah, a good one. No, that seems to be the story of his, his uh, 2017. Uh, just this week. Any car, yeah, well. Here we go then, final lap. And Ackerson then might be blinking his way to a, uh, to a race win. Oh! oh, McIntyre on the grass there nearly going through the right-hander. He's lucky, Alex, that's a slow speed section. Because yeah. He, He'll try to avoid the Kia doesn't cope with the grass too badly, really, unless you're braking on it. Here we go then. Oh my goodness! I, don't, I think the I think the goose is cooked now for for the chasing drivers. Adam. Yeah, looks like Hackerson might just have enough. Actually, just got to hold on for about about half a mile. Is McIntyre going to have a go on Davis? I wonder. Final corner. Going to swing to the outside. Frank cut. Oh, oh, it's very close though. Hackerson blocks off the entry. He's going to take Back it. Hackerson, yeah. is he? Yes. Oh, hello. Oh, sorry. Uh, the, the timing changed for a second. It had Nathan Davis listed as the winner on my screen. But, um, yeah. then three pro sim cars in a row. Stevens, Bond, Hunt. Very good result for them ahead of Bun. And Gore, Wright and Harrod. The next ones. They're still fighting here. Whitehead. I've barely seen Andrew Whitehead, actually. In Mayer at the back, I think Whitehead versus Rizzo. Baker, 23rd place in the end for number two. On Roberts, Atkin going Atkinson, in the final corner. Atkinson versus Malcolm as well. That's going to be Stuart Atkinson's. And Julian Janowski, in gear. Been a bit rounds anonymous in this meeting, but yeah, he's rounds out the field with a completely clean car, does Janowski. So, I wonder if he started from the pits. Oh, you might be right. Yeah, he did actually. He started. He started on the second row of the grid, Julian Janowski. So, um, yeah, he, and, he, and he got a pit lane start. So, yeah. yeah well, then, not an, a bit, a bit of an uneventful meeting for for Julian there. When you feel the finishing order then from the fourth and final race of the day, Ben Hackerson takes the victory. Nathan Davis second, third for Jack McIntyre, fourth, uh, seven seconds behind. It's not as close as we had in race three, is it?
uh, Kip Stevens, fifth for Laura Bond, sixth for Dan Hunt, seventh for Matt Bunn, eighth for Richard Gore, ninth for Max Wright, and tenth for Pete Harrod. Stuart McFadden in eleventh, twelfth for Dan Kraft. From 30th on the grid, that's not too shabby. The same for Andreas Katz, he finished in 13th after starting 31st. 14th for Colin Cunniff, 15th for Stephen Baxter, 16th for Adam Hadfield, 17th for Alex Malensky, 18th for Jamie Fluke after starting in 41st position on the grid. And then uh, George Simmons, 19th for Michael Hall, 20th. Lee Berridge in 21st, 22nd for Ross McFarlane, 23rd for Dave Baker, 24th for Greg Evans. Uh, 5th, Nicole Foggy, 26th, 26th is Rizzo, 27th, Andrew Whitehead, 28th, Michael Blake, 29th, D John Roberts, and 30th, Matthew Kieber, Forsyth Helgerson, 31st, 32nd is uh, Stuart Atkinson, 33rd, Scott Malcolm and Janowski there in 34th, 4 laps down, Ash Sutton disqualified, Josh Thompson, I think, went the same way, uh, Jay Blackhall, Crash, same for Rob Graham, Sven Glatzel, Pete Newman, Stenin Chapolevsky, uh, the man who sits third in the championship, a zero for him in race four. Mark Woodhouse also out, along with Rusty Laidler, who was the first out of the race. All right, then. So um, that concludes the racing night here at Mid-Ohio. And uh, what I will say, Alex, has been a, a fantastic meet. It's been a great meeting. Yeah, a lot of great battling out there as well. Mid Ohio delivering, and um, yeah, we knew it would do. Every corner leads into the next, and uh, some side by side, and some great overtaking maneuvers going on as well. So yeah, good, good meeting and all. all right, on to, yeah, onto the interviews, I think, which yep. um, hopefully go a bit better than they did yes than last week at most. For who's the victim? I reckon we're going to go for the. Well, we need to go for the winner of. Uh, Final race, if he can hear us. I think. I was going to say, if we can hear him. In fact, we'll get both both the boosted uh, drivers in there. We've got Ben Hackson and George Simmons. Can you hear me, both of you? Yeah. Excellent. Um, we start with uh, George then, um, winning a race earlier on tonight. Uh, that's the first one in a while for you, isn't it? I think it's the first one of this season, actually. But um, yeah, quite pleased with that. Obviously, it's. Um, I've missed quite a few races this season. I was, I've been away with work, and so uh, hoping to pick up as many wins as possible now in the second half to try and squeeze into the showdown. Because it's such a close fight out there on the track every week, um, getting a nice easy one like that every now and again is is uh, must feel pretty good. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, winning race two isn't quite the same as winning race one. But as I think I got a bit cheeky, really, because I picked up a excluded from qualifying, which meant I was at the back of the grid for race one. I managed to make my way up to 26th and had it handed to me on a plate, really. But, you know, you've got to take the, take the wins when they come. And for everybody, though, that's what, you know, everybody has to deal with. And uh, definitely not the only one who got banned from qualifying. There were definitely a few of them. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah, doing the Adam Bath special, getting uh, banned from uh, banned from Q. Sorry, mate. As um, uh, Ben Axon joins us as well in the commentary box, um, Ben, that last race was it was it difficult out there? Because obviously it had the connection problems. Was it causing you any issues while you were um, while you were going yeah. around the track? On my side, it's completely fine. Um, so I'm just starting the races from the pits until it works out, and then I got pole, so I was like, I might as well start and try and run off. And then I drove off the track twice because. Uh, I think I got a bit bored. It's a bit unusual to be driving by yourself, and uh, I broke at the GT3 braking point, which is later than the Kia one. <laughs> so I thought I'd dangle the carrot to the other two, see if they have a go. They couldn't quite um, manage to um, to eat the carrot, unfortunately, and uh, well, for them at least. Anyway, fortunately for you, two wins for Boosted Motorsport. Though. I'm not convinced that's ever happened before. Do we know if that's? Uh, no, it's our first win of the season, so well, first two wins. There you go. So, but that's definitely the first time, isn't it? I think you've won two in one meeting. Is that right? Definitely. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So, um, must be very, we very happy. Have, Sorry, we do have Andrew. We have do a team principal Andrew Whitehead, I should say, in the um. Oh, do we? Yeah, we in do. The Sorry. box as well. Um, yeah, I've, I've taught them well, haven't I? <laughs> that's it. What happened to you in race one? Oh, there's an issue, wasn't there? It seems so long ago. Um, race one. Oh Did you get hit? no, no, no. Um, it checked up a little bit in front of me, so I decided to um hit the brakes and take to the outside which which sort of put me on the grass and then I had to wait for everybody to go by before I could get back on so I, I yeah chose the uh, chose the, the the suicide option rather than going to the back of someone fair enough I suppose that's um, it's lesser of two I don't know if it's lesser of two evils or not really to be yeah. fair but um, you must be points. 
Well, I finished, and so did everyone around me. I think that was the that was the main objective of going on the grass there. Well, that's it. Um, you must be pleased, though, mate. Uh, two two wins for the team. First time that's happened in in one meeting. You're definitely getting there. Yeah, chuffed to bits. You know, I, mean, I think we said in one of the previous interviews. You know, no no disrespect to to John or Stuart, or, or even myself, but you know, we've we've got the two two young guns flying away there um, in in Ben and George, and the rest of us we stick with the solid results sort of mid to mid to back we just finish as many races as we can and and, and bank the points it's kind of frustrated when we when we don't get the finishes because obviously we haven't got the ability to go out there and and fight week in week out in the in the top 10 so we do have to finish to, in order to be able to bank those points but um yeah on the whole it's uh, it's working out fairly well i think although i think it was our it was the first or second race was one of the worst ones we'd had all season, even though I think we had a win and nothing else. <laughs> it was the third one. <laughs> third, was it? I mean, obviously when you come to the meeting, you know, the goal is to win all four, and you've won two of them uh, tonight. Uh, I've got to say, like, if, if anybody's watching or listening out there, come and sponsor this team, because they're a good team, they've got good <laughs> drivers, and buddy, get, get your ass on it. Get your ass on this team. Best you've got, they've got the, probably the best paints, I would say that as well, I would say. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Apart not... from the Apex ones, of course. Um, <laughs> right, Mr. It's not, Mr. It's not White... all about the paint, it's about the points. And we're doing Mr. all right with the points. That's, oh, that's it. it. Yeah. Mr. Whitehead, since you've, uh, since you've been summoned into the commentary box, um, you can uh, deal with the thank yous and the, uh, the shout outs if you like. Well, yeah, as, as you've just sort of pointed out, we're, we're a self funded team, so the thank yous are too all of the members of the team um, particularly Ben and George for the wins tonight but Stuart and uh, and John for, for plugging away and, and, and getting the, the, the frequent top 10s I think Stuart had a, a top 10 tonight so yeah um, just thanks to the guys for, for sticking with it and, and being so so solid and of course Tristan who jumps in when, when we've got people unavailable so um, yeah he's had two second places as well don't forget yeah, I just, just chuffed a bit. They're such such a great team. I'm so so pleased with them and, and so proud of them. I will say, at the risk of upsetting you lot, I think um, Bodice has got the best livery. <laughs> I would say I, I like it anyway. I think um, uh, that's my well, favourite one. Perhaps that will encourage him to come and race a bit more with us as well. He's more than welcome. He, I think he definitely should do. I think so. Um, Alex, have you got anything for the boosted guys? Um, no, not really. I think you covered everything just to say, yeah, congrats, guys. You know, good meeting, good couple of wins. Um, yeah, that's what, you, that's what you want to see, really. All right. Well, Thank you very you, much. Going to let you go, guys, yeah. but yeah, well done again. Look Thanks. forward to watching it back. Thank you. Thanks to Cheers. you guys again. Awesome stream, as always. Doing a brilliant job. Yes, Thanks, thank mate. you. Boosted Motorsport there. And um, Adam, it's good to see a team that, for a while, as Andrew said, never really made a big impression. They're really starting to come into their own and they're starting to challenge even in, in race ones now as well in the top five and six. Yeah, we always see one or two of their cars now represented inside the top ten. Look at Hackerson, he's inside the top five in the points and isn't too far off the likes of Chepilevsky and, and Wojciech, especially after tonight with uh, Chepi getting a zero in race four and Vidovic picking up four zeros for not being here. So Boosted have definitely written themselves in with a chance of uh, the regular season and also uh, the showdown when it gets underway later on in the year. Indeed. Um, Alex, any any more interviews there or, or what do you think? Is that... Um... Both automech, a couple of automech drivers down there, Stu and Scott. Yep. Right then, we've got the automech drivers then in the uh, commentary box with us. We've got Scott Malcolm, we've got Stuart McFadden. Um, chaps, welcome. Thank you very much for having us. Hello. All right. Um, on, then take us through that meeting then, um, Stu. I'll start with you first, mate. I know you started near the back of, of race one and you looked like you were in the thick of it from the very beginning. I know it's, a, it's probably the best out of had all season, to be honest. I got an exclusion for qualifying uh, for race one, which I wasn't too miffed about because uh, well, I shouldn't really be saying this, but <laughs> um, because it's quite tight, the first corner is quite tight, and the hairpin at the end of that straight is quite tight as well. I knew there was going to be a bit. Uh, I knew there was going to be uh, some inc instance there, so I just kind of just stayed out of trouble and just plodded along, tried to keep my tyres as good as they could so in the last few laps I could just absolutely gun it and make make positions up and it worked so I used that strategy for the rest of the race and it <laughs> worked <laughs> so it's just, it's, you go. Go 
Uh, just maybe I should use it for the rest of the season now. It's too late now to <laughs> <laughs> rewind and do it for the start of the season, though. So, but I'll just use that strategy. I think it wasn't a bad one, definitely. Um, Scott, it seemed like it was one of the more inconsistent races for your team tonight, but uh, inconsistent meetings, that is. And um, why do you think that was? Was it something in qualifying that you suffered with, or was it uh, maybe issues during the race that, that, that stopped you? Sorry, what was that? I was to paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, well, that you've joined the club for us from last week, so... Um... I was certainly a day to even... <laughs> there you go. Um, so, I was... <laughs> oh, do you remember the question, you Andrew? Forgot, <laughs> you, yeah. I do remember the question. Do do, yeah. Um... Right then, here we go. So we... Basically, t- tell us about your night, Scott. But that long, long story cut short. Tell us about your night. First race, can't remember a thing. Second race... Uh... Got the reverse kid positions. Third race, absolutely brilliant. Top ten. I'll take that. Fourth race? Oh, there wasn't a fourth race for him, he forgot. Ah, there was no fourth race. He forgot, he forgot to just, turn up. <laughs> I was just dodging away at the back as usual. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'll tell you what on that note then, uh, gentlemen. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna bid you farewell and uh have a uh, Stu, do you wanna give a shout out to the sponsors, mate? Yes, yeah. can you go and do it? Because I've made a total mess. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks to Automaking, thanks to Automaking Not Kill for uh, continuing supporting us through the series and NK, NK Mentoring, uh, our new, one of our new sponsors for this season. So thank you very much to all them uh, because we couldn't do it without them. So we couldn't have all this fun if they weren't here. So thanks oh, to them. Awesome and I had thank a terrible voice book through that. That I tried to hide. Right, um, <laughs> thanks very much. Um, Stuart, we'll see you next week. Um, yep. Scott, if you remember to turn up, we'll see you there as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is one yeah, for the guys. for this, usually. <laughs> That's it. Cheers, boys. Yeah, see you soon, guys. And now, uh, final victim for the evening, uh, we've got Josh Thompson, who's with Adamath. Hi, Josh. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Uh, well, uh, it wasn't the best, was it? Was that three DNFs in a row in the end? Yes, sadly. Did we get one finish? Did we get one finish in race one? Yeah, race one was actually quite good. Started 28th after making a hash of qualifying, just trying too hard. Burned my way up through the field quite nicely, finishing 14th, which wasn't too bad because I found this track really challenging to learn. Didn't suit how I drove the car. So to get up the field like that, I was quite happy with. But then after that, it just went downhill, really. Did you get to see much of the action then? Oh, I guess you did, really. Have you missed out um, uh, race two, three, and four? Yes, but, well, to be honest, I didn't miss most of race four because I managed to do at least half a race. But race two, I was out within 100 metres because of a uh, Hackerson connection problem at the start. So that was that. And then race three, I did most of it and got in a tangle with Sutton. But now uh, race four and race two were quite good. So I managed to watch them all back on my stream, though. Of course, yeah, you do race quite a lot of a lot of cars on iRacing. Where else does the Kia Optima rank in a few on on the iRacing roster? The drive as just for fun. Uh, it's nowhere near what I'd like want to race all the time. But because of the grids are so big and the racing you don't get this sort of racing on anything else you race. So it's something which compl- I think I treat it completely different to everything else, which is the reason why I enjoy racing it. Even in, even though with DNFs and crashes, it's still the most fun you have all week. Alex, I know you've only done one race meeting. Would you would you reciprocate uh, those those thoughts there by Josh? I think so. I think I've said that for a long time actually. <laughs> that this is probably one of the most enjoyable series to um, to watch. You know, the what we commentate on by far. I think this is probably the most competitive series. Nothing comes nothing comes close. World Championship. The you know the Blanc Band was pretty good this weekend, but it's not like that for the for the best part, you know, mm. just what, what are we talking about? I'm just looking at the the timings there, you know, the top 20 cars separated by 17 seconds. I mean, it's less than a second all the way down to 20th. It's, it just doesn't get any closer than that. Exactly. And of course, uh, Josh, you do a lot of go-karting. How's that going at the moment? Uh, not bad. Taking a bit of a sidestep now due to just not having as much fun and being a bit of a washout season with luck, especially in the main British Championship. So taking a bit of a sidestep. 
and looking into British GT, got my first test with Lannan racing at the end of August. So hopefully we'll be competing in that next year. Well, that's the plan anyway. There we go. Next week then in the BSRT, so we head to um, Lime Rock. Ooh. I just want to thought I couldn't get any more narrow. Um, yeah, your thoughts on that one? <laughs> more carnage? Oh uh, yeah, that I'm is going to be that. Yeah. But I think that track will be a lot, a lot of fun. Especially for you guys broadcasting it, it's going to be mental. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it already. Before we let you go then, um, as I think Fanatex, uh, only representative in the commentary box today, um, yeah, send out the messages to the sponsors. Well, we don't really have any on the car, to be honest, just Fanatec, really. But <laughs> that's it. I don't know the sponsors. They said they were going to come down here, but we all had a bad race and we didn't bother, so I came down. Oh, well, there you go. Yeah. Cooper. Oh, well done. Uh, well, well done on completing race one. <laughs> Hopefully things get better at Lyra yep. Park. And yeah, best of luck with the test in the, um, the British GT car. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for talking to us. All right. Josh Thompson well, there, yeah. Josh um, Thompson there. Um, finishing off the week... Alex much better than he uh, started it. Yeah, I think so. Um, sometimes you just have weeks that you want to forget, don't you? I think that that's that's one. That was one. In, I will I will just say, it in fairness, I wasn't fully responsible for for the uh, the other one the other day, but we'll see. Oh yeah. no, not at all. Definitely, he didn't he tit didn't start really it the other the day, day, did day, he? But, but uh... you know, it was rubbish on both counts, but it was tit for tat. Yeah, and that's it. And. Um, well, on that, uh, I think we're going to say goodbye then for the evening. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure to uh, bring the action to you from the BSRTC this week. Um, join us next week, of course. And, and um, Adam, are you around for the... Uh, is, it, is it the Oceanic F1 tomorrow? It is the Oceanic F1 tomorrow, but I, I, I don't know if I'm going to be there. But um... <laughs> Sorry, I've just dropped you in it. I don't know if you just dropped me in it live on that. Um, yeah. Yeah, get, you better get working on that, um, on that group chat. Find some cover. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Oh. Yes, there we go. But we do... a long night ahead. Um... <laughs> well, but you could, okay. You well, if if um, in just in case, you can you can still join us for the Oceanic F1 tomorrow. Um, I couldn't tell you who's going to be doing it. However, um, myself, Alex Simpson, we're going to be around for the V8 Supercars, the European V8 Supercars, in fact, um, on Saturday evening. That's uh, race coverage is starting at half past eight, and qualifying coverage possibly slightly earlier as well. It depends. Okay. Um, thank you, everybody. This has been um, the Apex Racing TV broadcast of the BSRTC on Apex Racing TV and iRacing Live. And we'll catch you later.